More dog. Hello and welcome to Lore Dump. Uh, this is the show where um, I or one of my friends uh, take somebody who has never played a game or game franchise and walk them through the full story. Uh, this is part two. If you're looking for part one of covering Kingdom Hearts 1, uh, that will be in the description below and uh, I will also make it the, the top pinned comment on the YouTube video. Um, I'm joined as always by Chase. hey And Neil. Hello. Uh, and we are starting to cover uh, Kingdom Hearts Chain of Memories. Let's get into it. We're going to go straight into it. So, Just Chase. Straight into it. Over to you. So. Before we actually start covering the plot, I would like to just very briefly note, this isn't Kingdom Hearts 2. All right. You would expect it to go one, Did it come out and then chronologically two. right after one? It came out chronologically right after one in November of 2004. Okay, so it's, been a, it's been a couple of years. Yeah, yes, so yeah. so two years after. Um, it, it brings up a very important point about Kingdom Hearts um, that I think a lot of people realized when Kingdom Hearts 3 came out. That Kingdom Hearts has a lot of quote-unquote spin-off games that are not in any way spin-off games. They are absolutely... This was going to be my question. Like, why isn't this too? It seems like because what you're saying, it's this is the sequel to the first one. It is the sequel to the first one. Right, okay. This takes place literally five seconds following... When they chased after Pluto into the fields, that is when this game starts. Right. What and platform was it released on? This was originally released for the Game Boy... What? The Game Boy Advance? Yeah, the Game the... Boy Advance. This was a wow. Game Boy and game. And so what, then remade for other things? You... This, um, when, and if you, where, where have that one? Um, so, in the lead up to Kingdom Hearts 3, um, kind of going between Kingdom Hearts, uh, going really like 2016 up until 2020 when Kingdom Hearts 3 came out, they started re-releasing everything in collector's editions and with HD remasters, um, to the point where now you can get like the entire series on one disc, um, I'll, except for Kingdom Hearts 3, which is great, you know. It doesn't fix the bullshit of the past, though, necessarily. Uh, it, it provides a lot of smoothing for later retcons to make it feel like they had always been so, canonical. I suppose the point I'm getting, this is essential viewing, basically, if, yes. if you're a fan of the franchise, but released on an entirely different console and not on the console that so, it was originally released, the first the, game was released on. Here's the thing, and I can speak from experience for this, is if you go, because I did this as a child, is if you go straight from Kingdom One, Hearts 1 to 2 without knowing that Chain of Memories exists, you will be so lost. Granted, it's not as bad there. You'll be lost for the first hour, hour and a half, and a couple plot points won't make sense. Mm. It's not awful if you go from 1 to 2 versus, for example, because there's only one, technically two games between, there's one required viewing between Kingdom Hearts 1 and 2. Yeah. And an optional but arguably required viewing. <laughs> um, between Wait, two what is and that? Wait, three, so... 358. I thought that came out after two, did it not? It came out, but chronologically it takes place simultaneous with Chain of Memories. Right, I see. Okay. Um, okay. I can love the name of <laughs> <laughs> Whereas, um, like, two to three, there was one, two, three, four, five, six games between two and three. And if you went into three, you would be lost. You wouldn't know the main villain. You wouldn't know 80% of the characters. You okay. wouldn't know anything if you didn't play the quote-unquote spin-offs. And the way that you kind of determine, originally at least, uh, Kingdom Hearts chronology is if it is a numbered entry, it was one of the PlayStation exclusives. Right. Okay. Um, before Kingdom so Hearts this 3 is, this released This maybe even a deal with Sony, if we're speculating, but, but maybe po even Possibly. Not. Because, for example, this one came out on Game Boy. The next one came out on DS. Next spin-off after that came out on PSP, then another oh, then another. Love yeah. the PSP. Just I'm gonna take a second out here to show some love for the PSP. <laughs> Maybe the second best console I ever owned in my life. Like yeah. that thing got me through about ten years. Fair. Very underappreciated. Yep, shout out to the PSP. Right, shout Chase. Out to the PSP. Bring let's, it back. let's get into chain of memories because oh, this, this is already making me angry, so let's go. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And let's not even get started about the mobile games. <laughs> The best games. So, Kingdom Hearts, Chain of Memories. So I noticed in some of the art for the last game, yeah. he was holding these sort of cards with the crowns. Is that relevant? Should I know what that uh, is? So that was that was just poor choice of artwork for the last game, to be honest. Mm. <laughs> um, the cards, you should not know what they are. They are a thing from this game. 
Right. They are only really relevant to this game. We'll get into them. Don't worry about it. Um, They're bullshit. <laughs> is what they are. Okay. And if you think that, my God. <laughs> Bro, I, I have a love-hate relationship with Chain of Memories, but we'll get into that in... Cool. Hit us with it. Story time. So, Kingdom Hearts... Chain of Memories. This takes place um, at exactly the same moment with Kingdom Hearts 1 ending, with the trio chasing after Pluto into the rolling hills. Night falls, and the trio stops to rest, but Sora's being a little adventurous boy, and he goes for a walk. While there, a figure in a black hooded latex trench coat... So not the hooded figure from the previous game. Not the hooded figure from the previous game. um, Also, commit this trench coat to memory, because... 80% 80% of the bad guys from this point forward wear this trench coat. It zips at both ends of the main zip, which is a fucking nightmare. Do you know how often, like, zip stick in coats? Like... <laughs> Sorry. I've only, I've only just noticed that now. It's also got a string pull to, like, pull the hood close, which is hilarious to think before it comes, whoever this person, whoever they might be, before they come over to Sora and they have to sort of go, whoop, and, like, pull the little ties to strengthen the hood. <laughs> Why? Because they don't need to hide their identities from anyone, not... if I remember this organization okay, so correctly. I can tell you that canonically, and this is the same reason that some good guys also wear this same coat mm-hmm. later, this coat, and this might be spoilers, but I don't care, um, it's a shield against the darkness. Oh, I didn't know. Okay. Yeah, so this coat is essentially... In fact, I think this is revealed in Union Cross, so I don't care. That's fine. Um, yeah, it's it's essentially, it's it's kind of like an armor that just protects you against the darkness. So a lot of these characters are using it to not, you know, pull a Maleficent and fall into the darkness. Oh, is that why a certain good character ends up wearing it later? Yes. Right. Yes. Christ. Okay, Jesus. They're not oh. just trying to look like the baddies. I on, I th- Okay, I'm, I'm going to call bullshit on that. Because whilst absolutely, yeah, sure, whatever, I don't fucking know anything about Kingdom Hearts, I'm also going to say that it's primarily to evoke mystery for the sake of mystery, well, and it's so a load of wank at, to confuse you. At this point, yes. Mm. It is absolutely just there to give your baddies a spooky look. Yeah. And to give them a unionizing feature. This is definitely a later retcon feature yeah. that I'm just explaining now because I can. Oh, no, yeah. Um, but, anyhow, Roby, um... Roby, is that his name? Roby. Uh, we Roby also, Roberson. He, he's Roby Roberson. Cool. Um, tells Sora that the road ahead, on the road ahead, rather, lies something he needs. But that in order to claim it, he has to lose something dear to him. Oh, no. Fade away to Sora. Sora fade away from Sora and onto a girl in a room of pure white. Her name's Nominee, but we don't know that yet. Oh, well. Uh, <laughs> next to her is a bird's cage with a doll inside it that is absolutely not obvious foreshadowing or illusion. Yeah. She's drawing an incredibly spiky and colorful castle on her little uh, sketch pad. And she's got a bird cage with a doll in it. Yeah. It's a, me- it it's like a metaphor for her. Yeah. Why has she done that? <laughs> I don't know, man. We don't question it. If I'm in here, you're in there. It's 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 like you know why does the person in the lit novel hang blue curtains to represent their sadness? Sure. Except this one's a bit more on the nose. <laughs> yeah, that would only work if the character you're talking about was a pair of blue curtains. <laughs> so anyhow, uh, so she's painted this uh, drawing. Uh, of a, her whole thing is like colored pencil drawings, of a castle, and the painting fades way into the castle! <gasps> wow! Oh. Um, in all its spiky glory. Visual master. Um, right Amazing. as Sora arrives onto it, and the title card appears, Kingdom Hearts, re, chain of memories. What does the re mean? Uh, yeah, um, um, is that spoilers? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's actually. I just, frankly, I don't know. Okay. Remake. Re. Well, yeah, they HD. do the same thing with Final they do Fantasy VII. Yeah. yeah, they do. It's a Nomura thing because Nomura also made Final Fantasy VII yeah. remake. Um, yeah. The only good game he's ever made. Yeah, what? I mean, well, this this re was not the original game title. It was added to the HD remaster. So, okay. think of it so we come to this frankly very yes. ugly castle. Do we know the name yet? Uh, no, we'll get there. Okay. Uh, so. so The trio enter the castle, and inside, similar to uh, Nomine's room, it is a pure white hallway, ornately decorated. 
Uh, it's very fancy. Um, and Goofy's like, we can't break in here, as if they've not broken into about 10 billion places in the last game. I mean, I, I'm, pre- I'm pretty sure he's friends with a war criminal. I don't know for sure. <laughs> well, speaking of said war criminal, Donald's still on his Gotta Find the King juice. <laughs> Oh, um, and smacks him back in and smacks. Do you think they have a key? <laughs> and, <laughs> and, and and smacks that sense back into him. Uh, oh. Donald's got the feels that King Mickey's here for reasons, and apparently now Goofy feels the same way. Oh, they both have the feels. Yeah, but I'd listen. I'd, I love Goofy. He'll do whatever that little fuck says. Like if he <laughs> says, do you know what I mean? He's one of those guys. He's just gonna. You're not wrong. <laughs> yeah. Um. Yeah. So. Sora also feels that, looking at the castle, he knew that their very best friends were there. Oh. That's not weird at all. Well, Riku and Kairi. And oh shit, guess, guess what? Jiminy, who's still in his pocket, also feels it. Oh. What's yeah. happening? <laughs> Jiminy goes, my best friend's here, and it's you. That's how I know it too. I've been in your pocket the they're whole all, time. All like, I'm here too. <laughs> they're all like, oh shit, you know, we we believe in this. Um, okay. So... Trying to figure out why they all feel they kind of journey further in, but um, uh, Google Google is worried that they're like letting the heat out and that the whoever owns this castle is gonna you know worry about their heating bill and he goes to close the door and oh shit in front of the door it's hooded figure oh so the th- same same hooded figure the as same before? hooded figures before Roby okay uh, Roby um D- D- Donald's like magic uh, oh uh, but it doesn't work nothing shoots from his staff oh and the figure's like. It's obvious, and from the moment they stepped foot in the castle, they forgot every spill and ability they ever know, oh, which is so convenient so for a follow-up game. <laughs> I, hate, I hate that so much. Yeah, not a fan that of that. Worst. It is not the last game in this series that does that. Oh, oh, it's so Monty amazing. made a whole video about it. I did. I remember Monty this made a whole video about this. <laughs> um, so he tells them that in this place, to find is to lose, and to lose is to find, Ooh. and reveals this to be Castle Oblivion. Oh, because you forget. Right. Here, Sora's going to meet people he knew and misses, which of course leads Sora to think that Riku's here. Now, Hooded Man teleports around in some dark portals, shoots rose petals at Sora, keep that in mind, and ghost blasts himself through him. It's kind of like Kyrie did in the last game. Sora slashes him, and he uh, he poofs into a pile of rose petals because oh. he's a theatrical motherfucker. That is, I was going to say, I respect that. That is, <laughs> you know, yeah. Yeah. That's style like commitment to the brand mm. yeah yeah hooded man reappears and he's like i sampled your memories when i just ghosted through you and created those pointy crown cards oh. and on it is a picture of traverse town oh uh so here's the thing about this game is this game all as the title suggests has to do with memories these cards are the physical creations of Sora's memory. They're created from Sora's memories. Right. And in this game, you don't have generic RPG combat. Because it was on the Game Boy, and that would be very difficult to replicate, it's a deck-building game. It's, it's a, a card game. It's a card game! Oh my god. And, and this is essential to the canon? Yeah, and it's essential what to the canon. What do you mean? Like, I'm pretty and sure there were is... Final Fantasy games that managed to do RPG mechanics on the Game Boy. <laughs> yeah. Literally. That's turn-based. and You can't go from like a full-action RPG yeah, to turn-based. Right. That would be stupid. <laughs> that would be so... Let's do a card game. That would be stupid, Yakuza <laughs> like a dragon. <laughs> Anyhow. But like the whole thing is like, each one of your abilities is on a memory card. You have to, like, build your deck out of, like, memories of your friends and out of memories. Like, if you have a Donald card, then it might cast a magic spell. Or a Goofy card might cast a shield. Um, And you need to build that out. And you basically do, like... I don't even know how to explain, like, turn order or anything. To battle the Heartless <laughs> in the world using... It's like... Get in a roller at, card at, and you fall asleep. At least in... At least... I can't speak because I don't frankly remember the original but in, in the remake you do still run around in 3d space just you can't normally swing your sword you need to like select like scroll through your deck of cards and select the attack you this want. sounds wait, wait. awful so they remade the game yeah so you could is... play it on your disc today it's yeah. not just a collection of cutscenes or whatever no, this is the so a oh few of God. them that came from like ds or an older console that had mechanics that they couldn't directly port ps4 um, they just kind of turned in the remakes into cutscene collections, which is bullshit for one that we'll get to later. Um, and it's a damn shame. Uh, oh, but for this okay. one, yeah. for some reason, they went and just made a full fucking remake of the game. 
oh. and I don't know why. <laughs> With, uh, because sorry, it's not the, the one that deserves it. So in the remake, have they replaced the card mechanics? No. Okay. It's still the card mechanics, but now instead of like... I think it was a lot more turn-based in the original, and now it is like you still run around in 3D space. It's at least a good card game. No. Because I quite like some card games. No. Oh, it's good. Well, if you talk to my brother, my brother swears this is like <clears throat> the best Kingdom Hearts game, and he loves and he loved the original as well. I hate this mechanic. I love the story from this game, but the mechanics ruin this game for me. Okay. I, okay. Sure. Well, so, um, so we're in a castle, we've lost our memories, yeah. but our memories are turning into cards. Exactly. Um, Hooded Man, he sp- spouts more mumbo jumbo about gaining and losing, which is the theme of this game. Yeah. No more hearts in darkness. And he teleports away. Um, so, the thing is, there's a door at the end of this hallway. And this hallway is pretty much the only locale for the remainder of the game. <laughs> because okay. at the do- through the door at the end of the hallway, Sora can use this card to create a memory version of a place that he has revisited. So in this case, Traverse Town. Wait, so are we replaying Kingdom Hearts 1? We're replaying the locales and some of the fights, but the lore is... Do you remember playing no. this on Game Boy when you yes. were Wii? How, 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 how is it as a recreation? Because obviously the Game Boy is very limited. As oh. a, a location of a, a like, like Traverse Town... How is it as a recreation? As a recreation, it I think they just took the assets from the original game when they remade it, to be 100% honest, mm. um, from the remake, from the HD remake of Kingdom Hearts 1. But right. it, it, it plays great, and it looks great. I just hate the deck building mechanic. <laughs> and but we're not going to new Disney worlds, is my question. No, we are not. We are reliving Sora's memory of Kingdom Hearts 1 exactly. with a twist. Yes. My God. What the fuck? Well, there's a brand new story well, stuck so on top of an, the, another thing, game. Like, inside any of these memory Disney worlds, there's not really <laughs> plot. I I feel the shoes on the other foot now, isn't it, Bonty? Are you happy you set this up? <laughs> I remember. I, I thought I hated Kingdom Hearts. <laughs> I hate. Kingdom Hearts Chain of Memories, and nothing has happened yet. <laughs> okay. All right. anyhow, Worst game in the franchise. Uh, Sora ends up in Traverse Town for some great tutorialization, um, where Hooded Boy tells him that the world is created from his memories. Spooky, spooky. He runs around and meets uh, various characters, like the Final Fantasy crew, who be- I-, I suppose this is sampled from early memories or something, because they don't know him, but the names are familiar. So, like, the the, me- the times and of the memories are muddled a bit. Okay, so hold on. Are we are we time traveling? No. So what... We are traveling through memories. Right. So 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 are they, these people conscious? If it meets Leon, is Leon, like, a conscious being? When Sora leaves yes. the room, does Leon still go about well, his day? it's, like, a recreation created for the memories. But they don't remember him, so... No. The world gets obliterated once he leaves the room. Fucking hell. <laughs> We're, you don't think of that. <coughs> okay. But these aren't real places. No. They're memories They're of memories. real places. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, exactly. Um, so the people in them aren't sentient. His mind is making up the responses like a dream? Yeah, so he can walk up to Aerith, we're right? Not, can... We're not inside his mind. Like, his his memories have been extracted. Magic. Is this magic yes. dictating what the people say back to him? I suppose. So if Sora, who... We're in Sora's memory of Traverse Town. And say so he walks up to Aerith, and he's like, Aerith, you are the sexiest woman I've ever met, and I want to kiss you, right? Would Aerith, because she's Sora's recreation, be forced to go, sure, Sora, you're f- a she's handsome re- boy? She, she, she's recreated as he remembers her. So she so tell she, him the fuck off? Yes. Right. As she would you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, true. Uh, but, 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 so... so Okay, okay, yeah, all right, all right, all right, yes, I'm not going to drag us down I feel like here. you're getting me to explain things that were very much not explained. Yeah, it's fine, <laughs> let's just, what's happening now? Anyhow. You're on timeout. <laughs> <laughs> they come out, uh, out of the tutorial and back into Castle of Land, um, uh, where Roby comes back and he, he goes to approach Sora, but he's stopped by <gasps> another Roby. Oh, two This Robies? is Roby too. But this guy doesn't like uh, the mysterious vibe, so he pulls down his hood. Oh, well, last. And he has spiky red hair. There he is. <laughs> this is Axel. Axel. Got it memorized? Got it memorized? Got it memorized? I've seen this clip. Catch phrase. Sounds annoying. Got it. See, memorize. <laughs> it's annoying in this game, 
But then we get to a later game where it explains why he has the catchphrase, and then it gets really sad. Because he's forgotten that he's doing this thing over and over. So, uh, <laughs> so he takes over the show to test Sora, summoning his flaming chakrams, which I wish I had a photo of. Uh, and he fights. Uh, uh, very shortly before he poofs into a new card uh, with a new town. Wait, sorry. Oh, he, no, he no, you're on timeout. I've got a here. question. Yes. What is why? Why are the Robies doing this? I don't know. Because they sort of he was like, "Welcome to Castle Oblivion." You know, throw some roses at you. Poof, I'm gone. And then this comes turned up, and he's like, <laughs> "Got it memorized." And they have a fight. Like I don't understand. He's there. He's great. Like I assume they feed this off is, the memories. This is or... what you get for breaking into somebody's house. Yeah, but they, do they live here? They, yes. Oh. Do they not want him to be there creating memories? I don't know, man. Okay. I don't know, man. All right, okay. Um, I'm, I'm jumping so, the gun. So he poofs after he's defeated into a card. Uh, obviously, he's not dead. He poofs up on another side of the wall. Cool. Uh, saying, Sora, you passed my test. Here's, uh, you're ready to take on Castle of Wivian and, f- and you're ready to follow the memories. Uh, he needs to trust what he remembers and seek what he forgets. This is Axel saying Ooh. this. Too. This is Axel saying this. Cool. Um, and that's the only way that he can find someone special. Riku or Kairi? Who knows, man? Okay. It's so, a mystery. <laughs> Axel tells him that he's lost sight of the light within the darkness and forgotten that he forgot. Oh, no. Right. He well, he him. only forgot it because of your castle, surely, because it was only about five minutes ago he saved the world with all the light. Yeah, I feel like they've give, like inflicted a memory pro- amnesia on him, and then they go, well, that's your fucking problem. You actually, because of one of the later games, you can know the exact number of days between Ansem defeating him. I'm defeating Ansem and the start of this, and it's about 90 days. Oh, okay. If I remember oh, okay, right. Okay. Oh, I might right. have to uh, contradict that when we get to the later game where you are able to calculate that. This is hellish. So Sora's stuck in here for three months, well, so losing his mind. Yeah, time, time kind of works differently in the realm of darkness, so it might have felt longer to Sora, to be 100% honest. Jesus. All right. Bit right. bleak. Yeah. All right, let's keep going. Got it memorized. <laughs> Axel warns Sora that when his sleeping memories awaken, he may no longer be who he was. And poofs away. Gasp. Jiminy questions what he meant. Uh, well, <laughs> Get Jiminy. Jiminy's there. <laughs> J- I, Jiminy actually is a, a, a tad more relevant in this game for some reason. He, he looks well, like he's a scribe. He's written all of the memories down in his wee book. That. Jiminy what questions what he meant. Well, Goofy forgets the name of the place they're in. The fucks him. <laughs> the fucks up with everyone's memories. What's going on? <laughs> lost their old memories <laughs> but Goofy has <laughs> forgotten has lost his new <laughs> memories they're, so wait no no losing memories no so no 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 but Sora's like what's a Travers Town and who's Leon and <laughs> no. what's an Ansem and Goofy's <laughs> like where the fuck am I <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 no. They're, they're not they're not that far gone <laughs> to, to be clear to Sora's like, what's a Riku? He's like, gosh, Sora, where are we? (laughs) To be clear, they are not that far gone. Sora still remembered Leon and Traverse Town and stuff. It was Leon and stuff who didn't know who Sora was. Right, so, oh, right, okay. Wait, so, but why is Goofy forgetting the name of the castle then? Because they're starting- That's a new memory. Yeah, don't, don't question it. It doesn't it's need to- It's unrelated they're, to they're the just, <laughs> They're just losing memories. They're not losing memories chronologically. They're okay. not losing memories- In a Yeah, order. it just, it's, yeah. Yeah, they're just losing memories. I think that canonically, that is just, Goofy is a moron. I just <laughs> yeah, I don't, yeah, I, I don't think that's a memory problem. All right, cool, let's move on. So, Sorry. They're, they're all like, oh, it's going to be fine, because this castle isn't as bad as the last spooky castle. Um- Except that Sora doesn't actually remember any last castle. What, Hollow Bastion? Uh, Goofy can't even remember the name, thinking it might be, like, Holly something? (laughs) Um, and, uh, everyone thinks that he just made up the last castle with all the contraptions and stuff. Oh my god, see if the twist is that Donald and Goofy actually retain their memories, and they're just gaslighting Sora for three months. (laughs) That's a very Donald move. (laughs) We've seen it. (laughs) 
Yeah. So, I don't think there was ever another castle. You got any key blades? So, uh, you do Agrabah. Nothing. It, it's it's Kingdom Hearts 1 with funky memories. Cool. Okay. Onwards. Yeah. Coming back to Castle Oblivion from memory. Agrabah. Goofy's still kind of odd about uh, Holly. That ba- Holly Basti right. and reminds Sora that he unlocked his heart. So now Sora does remember turning into a heartless. Mm. Um, and this is where they ask Jiminy to check his journal where he wrote down all the adventures. Hey. But every page is blank. Why? Jiminy oh, confesses else? that he can't write. <laughs> <laughs> it's been a lie this whole time. Yeah, so, <laughs> the scene changes briefly to Nominee drawing on a notepad, uh, and she brushes away some of the loose dust from it. Oh, okay. So it's wait. So oh, Namini's okay. up there, and she's she's drawing pictures of Sora, Donald, and Goofy doing their thing. Yeah. Okay. And she she kind of just brushes away some okay. some old dust. Right. So some old memories. Okay. Then, uh, here's the whole thing about this game: is after you beat the game, you get to play again. I'm gonna. Why would I want to do that? So because you play it again as Riku. <clears throat> Technically, you need to beat the game to unlock this, but like chronologically, these happen simultaneously. So, I'm just going to interweave them. Sure. Also, because the cutscene compilation interlaced them. Sure. Yeah. <laughs> so, following the end of Kingdom Hearts 1, Riku wakes up in a fog. A voice tells him to stay asleep between the light and darkness. Cool. Uh, which is the place he drifted to after closing the door uh, with the king, and he lost himself to the darkness. Right. right. The voice reiterates that uh, here, where he's sleeping, it's safe. But if he wants to break the sleep and find the truth to take this key card, and it, it gives him one of the stupid crown cards. Right, right. Now, the truth is going to bring him pain, but Riku needs to know. But he, has he lost his memories as well, then? Yeah, does he no. forget me I thought these were memories. No. So, they are memories, but not Riku's. Oh, so you could be you could have someone else. Yeah, like, yeah, oh. yeah. Like, like, the, the cards can go to anybody. They are just created from memories, yeah, but okay. it doesn't need to be yours. So last time we saw Riku, he and Mickey were being trapped inside Kingdom Hearts, basically, yeah. right? Well, in the realm of darkness, but yes. in the realm of darkness, they closed so the doors. Kingdom Hearts. So that's where he is. Where we pick up with him, he's like just lost in the realm of darkness, he's in yes. between light and dark. Yeah. Thank you. And where's Mickey? Okay, we don't... Presumably know also lost to darkness currently. Well, uh, they're probably wandering yeah. separately. Presumably and, yeah. they both fell into darkness once they got locked in there. <clears throat> yeah. Do we ever find out who gives him the card? Yes. Okay. Uh, so, Riku takes the card, saying how it's a boring place to take a nap anyway. Oh, <laughs> so cool. He's so cool. It's a and boring he... <laughs> conversation anyway. <laughs> and, he, and he finds himself uh, in Castle Oblivion. This one is created from Memories of Maleficent's Castle. Oh, so it's different, and okay. the, the interior is different. Yeah. But so it's still the same, everything. like, it's the same sort of... So, he doesn't lose any memories. Right. But the cards are still created from his memories. Right. Cool. Um, so so it's almost like the, the point of this... I, I Obviously, I'm get, we're, get, we're going to get there, I guess. But the point of this is almost that Riku's going to be confronted with being a bit of a dick during Kingdom Hearts 1. Is that the idea? Much, yeah. He has to kind of, like, deal with that. Okay, yeah. cool, cool. All right. So, I'm here for as that. he's exploring... Uh, Hollow Bastion, he comes across the bedroom he stays he stayed in while he was there. The voice returns, reminding Riku of how Maleficent gave him this room and tempted him with the darkness. He cast away anything, but at least they gave him a nice room. Yeah, yeah. Like, yeah. He was like a son to her. <laughs> uh, Riku wants to find his friends, but the voice persists, saying that Riku's heart only knows how to cast away. In seeking the outside world, he was willing to cast away his friends and would pass through the door to darkness. Yeah. What a dick! <laughs> um, yeah. Now... Up to this point, unlike Sora's memory worlds where there were people milling about and all the people and his friends from the past were there, in Riku's, it's empty. Nobody's there. Uh, Which the voice tells him is because his heart's empty. The only thing here is the residual darkness. He he cast everything out uh, to leave room for only the darkness. Cool. Um, Except for Maleficent. Oh, yeah, yeah, that makes sense. Who... Because his mem- heart can only contains memories of those who exist in the same darkness that he left in there. So he, he, he cast out all of his good friends. And he just has Dark Mom. Dark Mom. Dark I mean, mom. he didn't really cast out um, Kyrie. She was really his driving fa- force the whole time in his heart, wasn't she? Yeah, that's a really good well, point. Well, we're not going to question it. Okay. <laughs> Sorry, boss. Yeah. I don't know, man. <laughs> yeah. Cast out his friend. <laughs> who, who said Who said this is true? 
Okay. Is, is this true yeah, or is okay. this Fair another manipulate? Riku is really susceptible to manipulating strangers. Uh, sure, yeah, yeah. Oh, being manipulated by Just wait till he uh, meets Donald to be fucked. So Riku's like, no, 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 nah, fuck off. And she's like, but darkness. And he's like, nah, darkness don't got anything more for me. I'm going to beat it down. And Boston's like, ha, 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 ha. Well, if you're going to take out all the darkness, remember to take yourself out last. Oh. Oh. Jesus That's Christ. That's fucking class. I love that, that one. That is the best line of the game. Oh. <laughs> That's incredible. Tasty. Um, <laughs> Maleficent straight up just tell Riku to kill himself. Oh. <laughs> Fuck. And, and, and he's like, fine. I hate the weakness that led me to the darkness anyway. Jesus. Um, so you fucking kill her. Um, and the voice comes back as you come back to Castle Blimney. It's like, why do you, why do you shun the darkness? Um, and he's like, that voice sounds a bit oddly familiar. The voice is like, Riku, the darkness is a weapon. Fucking accept it. And it's Ansem. <gasps> he's yes. still alive? He's still alive. Oh, what, shit. He? He's I got a card. This was a real place. I, I sort of. Yeah, actually, maybe yeah. it's just a memory, right? Yeah, you could just be I a memory. Assume. No, he actually is real. Oh. Oh, fuck. Kind is of. he a card? No. Oh. Okay. But he has cards. Cards. Everybody has cards Everybody in Castle Building. Okay. Uh, now, Riku's not surprised by this. Um, <laughs> he he, he kind of suspected from the way that he'd been whispered to before that this was Ansem again, trying to pull him into the darkness. Um, And it was like, serve me again. But Riku's like, sword. Um, he points his sword and he goes, care for a game of Yu-Gi-Oh? <laughs> <laughs> um, now, Riku's a little bitch boy, so Ansem fucking decks him. Oh. Oh, well, yeah. And he's like, ah, you little weak ass little shit. Can't even defeat a Sora. <laughs> um, but if you, you know, bow to me, I'll give you, sprinkle a little darkness in there. I'll give you a little darkness. Wait, so so what what does what does what weapon does Riku have? Is it a sword or he is has his... he has his batwing bat sword. sword, batwing sword. Cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's a batwing. So no no keyblade for Riku. No keyblade for Riku. Cool. Um, remember the so Mickey has the keyblade of darkness and the keyblade of heart turned back into hearts and flew back into the princesses. Gotcha. No problem. So, but then we hear the rat. <gasps> oh! Fully clothed. He's fully, fully clothed. clothed. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, is this it? Is it like when he's real? And as a force ghost. A force ghost. Okay. Um. <clears throat> so when he's real, he's got his top off. When he's a um, force ghost, he's got a top on. Is that? No, 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 no. Uh, all you need to remember. All you need to remember is that in Kingdom Hearts 1, he was shirtless. That's all that matters, yeah. man. All right. You don't question it. Uh, and the rat's like, no, I had some, you're wrong. Riku, you're not alone. Have some light. You're not alone. Uh, the, the, the light's never going to give up on Riku. He can always find it in the deepest darkness. Aww, uh, like and Riku kicks Handsome's ass. Yeah. Oh. Um, Sorry, he, so he's just more <coughs> competent now going back into the fight. Like, he just does better in the fight. Well, now. he's filled with the light now. Yeah, he's, he's not... but does that, does that, what I mean is, does that, like, show itself in, like, magical energy? No, or he's just, it's, he's just it's, stronger. More, it's more a confidence boost, yeah, okay, to cool, be honest. Cool. Yeah, yeah, no, I'm fine with that, that's fine. <laughs> oh, so, like, we Mickey's like, I believe in you, bro, you can do it. Yeah, and, yeah, yeah, cool. All yeah, right. pretty much. Um, so, Ansem's like, oh, you defeated me, have a world card. <laughs> Why? Well, because, because he's, he's trying to make him understand that he can't overcome the darkness. So, Ansem, so, unlike Sora, where the Robies are giving him their world cards. Yeah. Through Riku's storyline, it's Ansem trying to show him that the darkness is the only path for him. Right, right, right. Got you, got you, got you. No problem. So it's all him trying so to... So within game mechanics, these cards that are given by Ansem are like dark abilities? No, 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 no. So he, he, he just has the same kind of ability cards as Sora. Right. But relevant to his memories. Okay, uh, the cards that they are specifically being handed out are... Memories of worlds. Oh, it's like go to Neverland. Remember being a dick to your friend. Essentially. Yeah, cool, cool, cool. Essentially, okay. yeah. So Ansem's like, if you can get through this world without giving him to darkness, you win. Um, although, before he goes, he's like, by the way, I strengthened your darkness. Ha 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 ha. Oh. Um, because he was giving Thank you. He was giving Riku the option to wield it. Uh because remember that if he if he gives into it, mm. and if he uses it, he loses their right. bet. Yeah. So then we, we we go to a different room, and there's two more Robies. Oh my! Gosh. Which I guess we're gonna show. Oh yeah. So we've got blue hair anime boy Zexion, Zexion and more other like, guy Lexius. More, more like, other guy Lexius. More like Sexion. 
Oh, y- yes, the sexy on. Also, I take it other guy Lexi is not important because he called him other guy. Uh, I just don't. I don't care about Lexi's cool. man. First one to go. <laughs> <laughs> he's, he's not. Yeah, I mean, we'll see. Ah, oh, and and then Vexen appears. Vexen's like, what's going on? And they mention that they're part of an organization, which must be why they all have matching uniforms. Um, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so Zexian's like, there's visitors in the castle's lowest basement. One of them is Maleficent. What? What? Wait, no, it's just the memory. But Vexen's like, that's ridiculous. The witch is dead. Oh. She can't return to the, to the realm of darkness of her own volition. Well, excuse me. The witch is gone. Is that what he says? Yeah, I, I need to be clear not to say dead. Cool, cool, cool. The okay. witch is gone and can't return to the realm of darkness of her own volition. Right. Um, But Zexine's like, well, it, it's not actually Maleficent. It's a convincing double, quote unquote, unquote, which... It's like a memory. We can take to mean it's probably the one that they don't know that Ansem no, is also making memory cards and giving it to Rico. These yeah. aren't memories with it. Like, the people aren't memories. Like, when when he met her, she wasn't a memory, was she? she was... Well, she was created from a memory. Okay. Right. I appreciate that we're working together with this one to yeah, figure out what's going on. We're going to need to. Yeah, yeah, no, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's so like, for, it's like... for context, this is also the episode where we've started drinking. Um, <laughs> yes, yeah. Also, uh, so... This is also a game where, for some reason, darkness has a smell. <laughs> this doesn't happen in any other game. Right. So the sex scene's like, the other smell was very familiar, similar to that of the superior. Oh. Is Wait, so, dark? okay. Or who did figure that we don't know? And Vixen's like, Rose hum. And Lexi's is like, we're going to wait, we're going to watch this. Is there like dramatic zoom-ins on each of those? Can I just say, yeah. I'm going to roll my eyes to the back of my skull when the fifth secret member, Roseboy, has their name revealed, and it'll also be an X. Vexy on Lex on Vexen, fucking Axel. Um, the only thing I want to say is that I'm really glad you've picked up on that this early. <laughs> and I'm gonna leave and I'm gonna leave it at that. Okay. We'll get to that tomorrow. <laughs> so come back to Sorbor. Uh so Sora's still milling about. Um, and he's, he's a bit worried that they're losing more than just their memories. What are they losing? Uh, he, he's worried... They're shit. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, Sora finally realizes that they're losing their memories, and that's why they can't remember the castle. Um, must have been, you know, what the hoodie guy was talking about before. Um, and th- that they're gonna lose more if they keep going. But Goofy's like... But you can never forget your friends because they always live on in your heart. And as long as you have your heart, your friends will be there forever. That's a good goofy. I appreciate that. Thank Aww. you. I think he just did an offensive Southern accent. I think that's what uh, He's American. He can I, get away with it. Technically, <laughs> I am Southern American, so <laughs> I'm allowed. Where Where is Goofy from? Is it like Florida? <laughs> so they do Memory Wonderland. Oh, well. And then Donald comes out and he's worried about the rat. Cool. Uh, and the trio's like, Riku. Where's Mickey? Um, and the trio's like, oh, well, we remember Riku and Mickey closing the door. So they're confident that their most important memories are still intact. Oh, good. They remember King Mickey. And as long as we remember Mickey Mouse, <laughs> <laughs> all will be okay. So we come to Axel and Mike's room and there's another Roby. Oh, yeah. Oh, and it's finally a girl. Oh, my God. And they're looking at a crystal ball. So this is, this is Lark's scene. Um, I love Larkseen. Larkseen's great. I fancy a Lark scene. She just comes and, like, yeah. rips the shit out of you yeah. every time she shows up. She's such a dick. Listen, man, you know what and you like. I, I, you I know, mean, I'm I, not gonna... I don't... Listen, with all the black leather gear and the... <laughs> um, they're looking at a crystal ball. Um... And she's she's all... <laughs> what are you even seeing, Sora Axel? Um... But Axel wants to know why Sora wasn't consumed by the darkness when he turned into a Heartless. Mm. And wouldn't we all? I would like to know that also. Uh, Because only one other man has ever been able to do that. Who? Ansem. Oh, of course. Yeah, okay. Makes sense. Wait, wait. So, so wait. So, hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Where is real life Ansem right now? He's not a thing. He's dead. He's He's dead. Because he's he's a Heartless now. But I thought Heartless was a copy. No. No, 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 no. When you lose your heart... It falls to the darkness and becomes a heartless. Even if it's an artificial heartless. 
no, 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 well, no. they're the created. Artificial heart was our whole separate thing. But your body, right. your body might be somewhere else. But your heart has become okay. No, so yeah, so we've got one Ansem, and he's the bad guy that we beat at the end of one, yes. and he's he's just doing his thing. And he, yeah, he, 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 he kind of he Riku. kind of vaguely exists in the darkness in Riku, right? Um, but for the most part, Ansem is dead. Christ. Okay. Right. No um, problem. He also wants to know why the Keyblade chose Sora. Again, don't we all? Yeah. Um. So. I hate Sora. Let's go back to Rico. <laughs> well, Sora's great. I, I look, you know, I know that the, you, you joke to the start. Yeah. <laughs> Just for context, I am being shown a, a really helpful PowerPoint here uh, with with re- 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 images related to whatever we're talking about. And we've just had Riku come on screen with the, the subtitles. I smell you, Ansem. <laughs> Show yourself. I for some reason in this game, they had darkness have a smell. I want to know what it smells like. They never have this in any of the other games. Is it like, we can find out what he smells like if you pay 650 quid for the fucking aftershave and perfume. Is it? Is it? No, because that's Ansem, mate. It's not. Oh, yeah, we don't get an Ansem smell. I want to know. Right. a Riku smell. I, I, I'm fascinated to know what I think, smells like. I think Riku it smells, smells sweaty, running around in like a sort of leather strap top. <laughs> no, and so two la- two layers of trousers as well. So. <laughs> yeah, I, I really want... Are these, are these meant to be like welly boots? I think they're are, like... Are susp- they're some sort of suspended like gaiters, like for, you know, like waders that fishermen use? Yeah, yeah, they, yeah, yeah, yeah. Parachute pants. But they're not parachute pants. Like, well, no, if he jumped out of a plane and took his shoes and went off, upside down, <laughs> he could like float down like Mary Poppins. Right. <laughs> yeah. Um, he, he, he's, he's all I can smell the familiar smell of darkness, Ooh. which I've written must be like a smoker thing because he can smell it on his skin. <laughs> ha 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 ha. Very good. Um, so Force Ghost Mickey comes back, uh, but he's in a different outfit from the last game. Oh, why? I don't know, man. Merch. And he, yeah. And uh, for some reason, he's, he's like, I can only send a part of my power to Castle Oblivion. Um, but, bro, you gotta not let go of who you are, even in the darkness. Uh, the, the light of Kingdom Hearts is gonna is gonna be the way that you don't lose sight of the light. Right. Uh, the Mickey's like, I'll find you! And he disappears. So it's like a threat. <laughs> <laughs> so, back in the dark room with the three Robies, uh, Zexian's like, I finally identified... Riku is the other mysterious scent, the one that smelt weirdly like the superior. Is he like the nerd one because he's got a book? Uh, yeah, kinda. Right. Yeah. Lexius looks like the big. Lexius looks like the big muscly dummy, and Vexen's (laughs) like the I don't know, generically creepy sort of. Zexian and Vexen are scientists. Lexian is muscle. Cool. (laughs) Is Zexian (laughs) single? Probably. 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 Um, so Vexen's uh, surprised that Riku's managed to make it out of the realm of darkness right uh, saying that uh, the darkness on him is probably why Zexion thought he was the superior cool. but they're like why the fuck's he here and Vexen's like oh it's because his existence is resonating with that of another hero and Zexion's like oh shit wait Sora's here what uh Seemingly meaning that not all of the organization members know that Sora's there. But they all know who Sora is. They know who Sora is. Right. But they don't all know that he's there. Mm. So, so clearly, right. information is not being passed down to the It's drugs. a very poor... Mismanagement, sort of, really. Yeah, yeah. it all comes down to management. Well, yeah, yeah, the question yeah, is, really. are these ones in on any plots involving Sora and his memories? I don't know, are they? Ooh. That's a question. Ooh. All right, okay. <laughs> um, so, Vexen's like, this, this Marluxia guy is this Marluxia is using Nomine's power to meddle with Sora's heart <gasps> now um, he's the the boot girl the Nomine's girl. the book girl the art the, the, the art school student right okay uh and that he wants the keyblade wielder for himself um Vexen's like <laughs> that's mm-hmm. fine because Riku's way cooler which clearly means that Vexen is one of everybody else in the fandom <laughs> yeah legit yeah okay um so going back to uh Sorazzles, um the trio is trying to think of what they've forgotten, but obviously you can't remember things that you don't remember. Why is Donald in a sailor outfit? I know this is changing the topic momentarily, right? But these guys you both look like they're well up to their mage what hat and their his... steampunk goggles. Also, I've seen Donald in a kind of like leather daddy zippy hat. <laughs> yeah, he's proper like from he's a cartoon. Back to, like, 
don't question. Okay. Keep in mind, they also don't have their original weapons from the first game either. Is it That's potentially fair. memory related? Who knows? Okay. Um. Okay. So, but like, it, they can't remember that anything they've forgotten. Uh. So they they must have lost him. But you know, if they forgot, they're probably not important because they'll definitely remember. Is yeah. that their assumption? Yeah. Because that means quite a lot to their character. I think. Yeah. Yeah. Like, well, like, if I forgot I you guys, I, I wouldn't assume I, I that that's know. not important I, I, I to don't, me. I don't actually know that. I, I think that it might be as a sort of self-defense thing as well. You might assume that that was, you know, you don't want to assume that you've forgotten the most important shit in your life. You know, you'd pro- you probably well, would go. Uh, no, well, I think I think I think you're giving not. Donald Duck too much <laughs> too much uh, right. sympathy here. But yeah, sorry. We need to we need to uh, chug on. So yeah, let's chug on. Let's chug on. Um, so, uh, Sora's like, I don't, I didn't forget anything. Look, here's my good luck charm that Kyrie gave me, and he's he's like, I'm gonna give it back. I remember this. Uh, one shitty Olympus Coliseum in a cloud fight later. Sora's still trying to figure out who the girl is. She's not Kyrie, but her name is on the tip of his tongue. The girl is sketching on her pad a picture of Sora, Whoa. Riku, Kyrie. And herself, and they're all holding hands. I love, I love shit like this. It's so sad. Do you guys remember the Pokemon movie with? Is it the one with Entei in it? And it's the little girl, and she's stuck in her magical realm, and Entei's her only friend, and he'll like defend her to the point of it being really destructive. But she's stuck there, like drawing the outside world. And really, coincidentally, I watched a video analysis of that movie literally yesterday. I haven't seen it <laughs> since I was a kid, but like it always stuck out to me. It was like this little girl stuck. Drawing, I can't remember what she's doing, but she's thinking about the outside world. Sounds this like just a of that. rip off to me. <laughs> Don't dare question the integrity of the uh, the Pokemon anime. No, I'm not. I'm questioning. <laughs> I'm questioning the integrity of chain of memories. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Riku goes uh, through memory, Agrabah and Monstro worlds that we know he was in and was uh, being a baddie in, uh, and he comes back to Castle Oblivion where he's met by. Vexen, I love that picture. Of Vexen, yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Uh, Riku's like, "Are you with Ansem?" But Vexen's like, "Well, you're you're half correct. He's Ansem, but he is not Ansem. Ultimately, he's he's probably nobody." Uh, Wait, hold on. No, let me see. I'm gonna let you keep going. Yeah, I'm just gonna buy it for now. He says how this half Ansem walks the twilight between light and dark. No, he don't. What does that mean? Very <laughs> similar to Riku, making okay. them similar. But it doesn't make any sense. Don't noise. question me, <laughs> sir. It's just words. <laughs> <laughs> See, I thought this was hysterical because this makes perfect sense to me. Nothing here doesn't make sense is yet. Is Twilight a tangible thing like light and dark? Yes. That is a third thing. Yes. Fuck off. Are, are you... <laughs> By the end of the game, there are nine realms, I no, think. No, there aren't! Why? Why? Are they Metal Gears or are they nukes? <laughs> the throwbacks! Um, oh, yeah, if I keep going, yeah. So, so Vex is a creep. He's had the grand old time. Oh, shit. So, Riku's like, there's darkness inside me. And he's like, uh, it's my enemy, but I'm gonna kill you. And he fights um, Vexen. And Vexen is a stupid pointy shield. Stupid pointy shield. He has a stupid pointy shield. Oh. Yeah, it's really dumb. I hate his weapon. Okay. Um, so, Vexen revels in stroking the darkness inside Riku. <laughs> <laughs> you were talking about a child, sir. A yeah, child. no, funny. Oh, <laughs> you can't even, do this. It's even worse. I, I wrote stoking, not stroking. <laughs> oh. <laughs> okay, fine. But he tells him that during this fight, Riku provided him with invaluable data and he disappears. So sometime... Uh, Riku does Neverland, and then we return to the Dark Room, where Lexius wants to know what's happening with Sora. Zexian's like, Nominee's powers are being used to shuffle his memories, and Marluxia's likely succeeding in gaining his puppet. Zexian thinks Sora's going to be valuable to the organization, but is worried about Marluxia and Larkseen's actions. Lexius is more concerned about how he doesn't know what Axel's thinking. Why do we care about Ax- what Axel's up to? Just because he ha- seems to be he's, kind he's, of empathetic, I guess, to he's, Sora? He's a bit sussy, man. Right. He's a bit sussy. So, Zexion thinks that Vexen will add his replica to take care of it. But Vexen despises Marluxia, so infighting is probably imminent. Back to Sora. Uh, following a monster's time in Monstro with S-Boy and the gang... S boy, who's S boy? I got really tired of writing Sora and Riku in this. Oh, okay. So every single time that I switch between them, I've like named the sections like S Town, Re, Sora's back boys, already in Riku land. So we'll cut to him. 
Oh shit, Sora's back. Soggles and Ricky. <laughs> Soggles and Ricky boo Sora again. Oh. So Sora finally remembers another girl being on the islands. Oh. Uh, and she was another friend besides Kairi and Riku. But we didn't see her in Kingdom Hearts 1. So, or well, the that's the thing is that nobody remembers Sora ever mentioning her. And so, right. but and so it's like, oh well, she went away when she was little. That's why I never mentioned her. Uh, but but Sora's weird, wearing his big boy pants here. So unlike she go away? Well, unlike everything else in the game, where his memories are leaving him, his memories of her are weirdly coming back and becoming what stronger. What you've lost and what you've gained. Exactly. But he can't remember her name. That's enough Sora, though. So she's, um, like, writing herself in, then. That's the yeah, well, well, so I'm, we're done with Sora. Back okay, to Riku. Okay, okay. So, uh, Riku does some bullshit in Traverse Town before he comes back to Castle Oblivion, where he's shocked as he's approached by another Riku! Oh. <laughs> Featuring oh. spoiler text. Oh. Um... Yeah, so this is um, a, a, a replica of Riku that Vex had made from the data that he extracted from Riku during the previous battle. What data? He, like, learned about him, I guess. Yeah, I know. <laughs> Look, man, I'm embracing the, the okay. chaos, all right? Exactly. <laughs> yeah, let's go! Two Rikus! <laughs> Two Rikus! How are, we, how are you going to help us here? How are so, you referring to any of these uh, So there's, I, I will always refer to him as Replica Riku. Cool, no problem. Um, <laughs> Replica. Down to his clothes. Did he make the clothes? Well, no, because because <laughs> is it like a three D printer? You just well, remember that. Remember the bodies are kind of malleable in this world, and they they change form to whatever's inside them, whether that be oh, yeah. a heart or, in this case, data. Yeah. Um, so the replica thinks that although Riku is real, he's not better. Um, oh, right, yes, and in fact, classy. replica Riku's yeah, better because replica Riku's not scared of nothing. Is he not? It embraces the darkness instead you know of what? running away like a little pussy boy. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. So he's, uh, we've got dark Riku then. So okay. Well, speaking of that, <laughs> replica Riku dons the edgy jumpsuit oh, and they okay. fight. Oh. Now, real Riku easily kicks his ass, and replica is like, <laughs> "It's just because I'm new." <laughs> <laughs> It's my first day! <laughs> <laughs> so it's shite! Oh, <laughs> Replica Riku's a waste of fucking screen time. He's a fucking child. Oh, Replica Riku's <laughs> such a sad one, though. So, Replica's like, it's so nice to have darkness. You're missing out. <laughs> Evidently like, not. Is just, it nice? You evidently not. We just kicked your ass, you fuck. <laughs> Um, <laughs> you little wet prick. So, <laughs> Replica Riku teleports away and joins uh, Zexian, Lucius, or Lexius, and Vexen in the other in the dark room, where he's like, Riku's a spineless wimp. Oh. I'm going to be better than him in no time. Oh, okay. Um, How? Who uh, knows? <laughs> so actual, actual <laughs> Riku no chases point. after him, but Ansem comes back, and Ansem's like, bro, you should be more like that Replica Riku. He's pretty cool. <laughs> <laughs> With it. <laughs> <laughs> hey, do you know who I just bumped into? I thought was pretty cool. <laughs> Replica Riku. Now, don't stop me here. Have you spoken to that guy? He's pretty chill. You brace the darkness, man. Maybe you should. <laughs> he's, he's, he's like, he's like, bro, bro, darkness, dark. Here, have some more worlds. Go keep challenging that darkness. <laughs> so, so pretty chill, dude. Replica Riku. I'm sorry. Why? I, I, I'm on board with Replicu. <laughs> I've got to say. Oh with Replicu? Right. <laughs> oh, anyway, back with Sora. Uh, he's, he's remembering more of the girl. Um, how she used to draw whenever they went to the beach. How cute. What an art student. Um, and that Riku and him fought over who she'd draw next. But then one day, she disappeared. <gasps> Gasp. But they fought A new girl Kairi. coming to the island. Sora, Sora wonders if that means, uh, if, if this is what was meant by how he's meant to gain things he lost. Now, back with Axel and Larkseen, best boy and girl, uh, watching Sora, they mentioned that their plan's going accordingly. Larkseen's gonna go challenge Sora next. And Axel's like, oh, but watch out, watch out. Uh, Sora's the key if they're gonna take over the organization. <gasps> they trying to Wait, take oh, over? they're trying to, the traitors, all right. The traitors, what? <laughs> I'm rooting for them. Uh, take them down. Sora does Halloween Town and then Lark Scene appears. Sora does Halloween Town and then Lark Scene appears. Sorry. I'm so here screen. for it. Yeah, can yeah. we continue that? Because it was like, we do Halloween Town, Oogie Boogie's there and we fight him and then Maleficent appears and it's like, no, 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 yeah, do them, fuck it. Like I like I said, they're vaguely, 
they're relevant to set the scene in Cage One, and then after that, they're not. So for so, con- yeah, yeah, for yeah, context, yeah. with us like skipping through the worlds, how far through this game are we now? That's a good question. Yeah, where are we? Obviously, it's difficult because you've got the two different playthroughs, but yeah, you've almost got double the game, I guess. Oh, okay. Right? He's been scrolling for a long time. About? Okay. So how far through, sir? Halfway. Maybe just under halfway. Okay. Okay. There we go. So Larkseen appears, um, and she's she's mocking them. She's like, "Oh, you're peeling away the worthless memories so you can can remember the true memories." Mm. But they haven't even remembered the most important thing, that poor girl's name. Oh. Um, and then Larkseen's like, "Guess what? That girl's here. She's being captive by the bad guys, and the hero needs to save her." This is a good Larkseen impression. Yeah, I'm here for it. But she's a bad guy, so they're gonna have to get through her first. Is Namini, Namini's a bad guy? No, 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 no. Larkseen's a bad guy. Oh, I'm a bad and the guy. Ba- oh, and yeah, and yeah, the yeah. bad guys have Namine. Mm, right. Um, okay. Or excuse me. They have the girl. Larkseen beats the shit out of Sora, and he drops a star-shaped charm um, that he doesn't recognize. Uh, and, and Larkseen mocks him because he's like, you don't even remember this, and you never took it off. You're always wearing this. Um, Wait, you said that his charm was made out of shells. The one that Kyrie gave him. That's not made out of shell. Who said this was Kyrie's charm? But where'd this come where'd this fucking bullshit come from? It's What's a, happening? It's a charm he's been wearing the whole time. What? It's a charm. And Larkseen's like, well, the memory must be engraved in your heart. And uh it prom- saying that prompts him to remember the girl's name. Okay. Which of course we know is Nomine. Yeah. Larkseen's like, I'm gonna smash the charm. And Sora kicks her ass. Do it, it's a fake charm. Fuck it. Break it. Um and then she's like, oh no, you beated me. Have a world card. <laughs> uh, Larkseen goes back to the other hundred fingers. Fingers? <laughs> um, and Axel's like, ha ha ha, you little bitch. You lost to Sora. Um, and they chat a bit. And we learn that Nomine has the power to implant false memories into people. Right. Wow. Okay. So she's never been on the island. She's a lot of shite. Probably quite sad, I guess, looking at the fact that she's like, you know, a wee blonde girl and her locked away in her room. But like, we she's locked like... in her birdcage, don't you know? <laughs> uh, so Riku doesn't want this, um, and Larkseen ta- taunts Nominee on being guilty about tampering with Sora's memories because Nominee doesn't want to do it. Uh, weirdly, Replica Riku appears and comes to Nominee's rescue, saying how she doesn't want to remember Sora. Oh, and also Replica Riku is now wearing the same evil guy outfit that. Uh, well, okay, he's, he's in his dark suit. Replica. <laughs> Swears that he he swears he's gonna keep Nominee safe, and he swears it on the charm that she gave him, oh. holding out the same charm. Oh, oh no! Yeah, he's he's an idiot, and he doesn't even know it. Like, yeah. So Larkseen says how it's like Nominee made Replicaku's heart from scratch, and Nominee is able to turn the memory cards into real items. Um, all of these cards made out of sort of memories. Mm. So of course she can fiddle with memories, which means that she can fiddle in a way that makes or be able to create artificial cards. She also has the power to turn these cards into physical items. Oh, right. So she can pull physical items out of Sora's memory. Okay. Like a keyblade? Like a charm. But that's not a real... That's never... That charm has never existed. So she, she can change them. So she changed the memory of the, the, Kyrie the giving thing, him the charm. Yeah. Cool, okay. And changed it into her giving the charm and then created the charm in reality. Shit, okay, right, okay, right, okay. Gasp. I'm invested. Okay. <laughs> so this is good. Uh, this is really interesting. Larkseen says how it won't be long till Sora forgets about Kyrie, but Nominee thinks it's the opposite, and that planting more false memories of her will cause his feelings for Kyrie to strengthen because <gasps> she is the shadow of Kyrie. <gasps> what? what? No. What? what does that mean? <laughs> what? <laughs> Shut up. Larkseen says that should be her incentive of doing it properly so she can be more than the shadow of Kyrie. That she could be somebody. <gasps> why is she why does Kyrie have a shadow? Yeah, or is that important later point. on and we're not allowed to know yet? Okay, okay, no spoilers. Question, right, no right. questions. No questions. <laughs> uh, immediately following the Larkseen fight, Sora sets off to find Nominee. He's like, I remember this Nominee. I gotta go rescue her. No. Um, <laughs> Atlantica happens. Uh, I'll save the girl. <laughs> Atlantica happens and Sora returns to Castle Oblivion to find Riku. Whoa. Which we know by the dark outfit and 
by interlacing <laughs> the seams is actually Repliku. Oh, but, no! But Sora no. doesn't know this, and in a normal playthrough, you wouldn't know this either at this point. Oh, oh okay. We would just question why he keeps bumping into random Riku who keeps changing outfits, I guess. Well, oh, well I know he hasn't well, met real Riku. He, he doesn't meet real Riku, he meets oh. Repliku. And also, he has come here because he he thought that there was someone he'd lost that he would be able to find here. Yeah, so does Sora remember Riku? Yes. He still remembers him. Okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, 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 so I was like, why are you here? But Riku's uh, back to being a dick. Right. And he's like, Sora, you forgot about me. You dick. Oh, um, Riku, Riku's such a prick. <laughs> <laughs> um, he's like, Sora, you only care about finding Nomine, not me. And Nomine doesn't even want to see you. Oh. <laughs> Um, I know that guy. <laughs> I've met that guy. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Repliku tells tells Sora to remember why Nominee left the islands, causing Sora to think it's his fault. Right. Repliku Riku says that he's protecting Nominee and that Sora will have to go through him to get to her. Sora's all, aren't we friends? But Riku's all, nah, fuck you, fam. I'm sick of looking at you. And <laughs> so is Nominee. <laughs> so is Nominee. Oh, God, Sora will be crushed. All it needs is Donald to be like, yeah, I heard you hates you too. I <laughs> feel <laughs> your, your Donald Duck Don't. voice is descended to it. Just sounds like hus- <laughs> it sounds like a husky Scottish grandmother. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, 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 this is disastrous. Now, oh yeah. dear God! Uh, Sorry. you're fine. So, <laughs> so obviously you beat the shit out of Replica Riku and he yeah. runs away. Uh, God, the poor guy's over too right now. <laughs> you, run, you you go to a Neverland and then find Riku on the other side, and you tell him that he Wait, needs real Riku or no, replica. Re- replica. <laughs> Sora's like, I need to rescue you and nominate so you can go back to Kairi. But replica Riku's like, Well, bitch, I told you to do that at the door. So like, oh. fuck you doing here? You're shirking duty. Is that how he talks? Does he sound just like Riku, or does he sound like a little bit of a bitch? Oh, he sounds exactly like Riku. But, oh, okay. But like, but like Riku mid Kingdom Hearts one when he was still being a little bitch. Cool, cool. Um, Replica Riku's like, I don't even want to go to the island. I already forgot about everyone else there, and so did Sora. Sora doesn't remember any of the other people from the island. Oh no, he forgot about his mom and her dinner. Oh no! Oh, oh no! Oh god! It's oh. depressing. We were dead by this point. <laughs> No, 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 because remember, Destiny Island is back. Oh, we resaved everyone. Yeah, we yeah, saved yeah, okay. everyone. Cool. So, Repliku says that the castle is making them forget things uh, to remember what really matters, like Nomine. You fight again to jog his memory and ob- obviously kick his ass again. Cool, yeah. Repliku, Riku, uh, right, yeah. Riku spouts off more stuff um, about how Story doesn't care and he runs away. Back in Nomine's room, Axel shows up and asks if watching your childhood friends fight hurts. He tells her that we nobodies can never hope to be somebodies. And this is actually kind of important because whilst I've been saying uh, that they call themselves nobodies and somebodies, it's very important to note that nobodies and somebodies are capitalized in... Well, no, no, not somebody. So, but nobody specifically is capitalized. It's a proper noun in... So it's a sense. group of people and so, nobodies are... A nobody the, nobodies, a the nobodies are people without a heart. But that's no. heartless. No, so... If, bodies, if we, if we remember bodies, back to answer the, report number 13 from Kingdom Hearts 1. Yeah. They are the bodies that are left in another realm. The heart is gone off and consumed and turned into a heartless. These are the bodies that are left behind. Neil's great at this. I was going to say straight up, I love you, and I love you, and I love that this is happening, and I love that I am the person in the room who is most behind, despite having played games so, of this, this is, franchise. This is great that Neil is like just... Keep, he's, oh, he's keeping clicking, up, man. Yeah, Jesus. Uh, yeah, well, you know. So what's a no way? So what's the difference between a nobody and a heartless? What's so the a heartless is made of the heart. So a heart, darkness, body. darkness plus. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so nobody it, can listen to this and so actually it, tell me that makes sense. A heart gets ripped out of right. a body. It gets consumed by the darkness, becoming a heartless. Right. But that leaves an empty body behind. Right. Now, for some people who have really, who had really strong wills, right. that body will essentially reanimate itself and go looking for a heart. Okay, so 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 he doesn't have a heart, Axel. No, but nor does. You said earlier they don't experience emotions. Is that because why? Because they don't have hearts. Right, but some of them do experience emotions. 
We'll get to that. <laughs> okay, because we you have described evidence to us of like Lark scene being like there's conniving. Also, and... There's also a whole game about them experiencing emotions, so we'll get to that. <laughs> okay, 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 fair enough. Yeah, no, yeah, but fair enough. You you've made it very clear that so nobody's um, in Heartless are two different factions, wait, and there's a separate. They're, 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 they're two like entities. I wouldn't two call entities. Them, so I would call yeah. them factions. Okay. I'm thinking of them as a group. I guess yeah. they're they're like basically both both products of the process of someone's heart being yes fucked out exactly. I'm very glad Neil Yeah, understands. thank God we're doing this together. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't a clue what's happening right now. I've played Kingdom Hearts 2, and I I have experienced Axel. Like, you know what I mean? I still don't know what the fuck's going on. Uh, so, yeah, okay. So, anyway, mm. Sora's all sad, champ, and he doesn't get why Riku doesn't want his help helping Namine. Uh, but there's like, we three are never apart. Me, Riku, and Namine. So one one Winnie the Pooh level later because I forgot to mention Winnie the Pooh has also been in the series but the world just has he has he fuck he was in the first yeah. game but he's just so on technically what does Winnie the Pooh do uh, oh. he, his entire his entire world is just mini games it's fully optional uh, basically you can go find Merlin at one point Merlin has like a story book is it Merlin from Sword in the Stone yeah that is off track for a second that has no story that film I understand why people don't like it. That is the Disney film I have the most emotional feeling for because I had it on VHS when I was a toddler and watched it every day. Oh, I think that you would love these games. Like, the more and more I, like we're speaking to I each mean, other, you clearly have oh, more no, no, affinity no, no, for contra- Disney than I do. Like, generally. Yeah, ch- ch- I like three films, uh, and I'm like, yeah, they're I've great. Got, like, sir, but, like, not the kind... I never watched Lion King mm-hmm. or Hercules or or, or Little Mermaid Disney. I never had yeah. any of that. I had Robin Hood, and I had uh, um, fucking... I Sword feel like you would get more though from than I ever did of going and be like, "Oh my god, it's Merlin!" And Merlin's like, "I have stories to yeah, tell you, Sora." And you're like, "It's fucking Merlin!" What I found to mention is that throughout like the entirety of Kingdom Hearts One, uh, it's Merlin who teaches you spells and shit. Mm. Fuck. Um, he's like a main NPC. He's not a main character, yeah, but he's an NPC. common main NPC. He's he's a reoccurring. Yeah. But you say that at the same time, there's the other half of this, which is that you have a lot more patience. For like bullshit. Final Fantasy. No, he doesn't. No, I don't. Are you kidding? Are you kidding me? Think about Metal Gear. I listened to those episodes. <laughs> think about the amount of shit this man is willing no, to do. No, no, I would stand by the Kingdom Hearts. And I'm going to say this on record. I'm going to cut the rest of it until this moment. Uh, no, Kingdom Hearts has, you take Metal Gear Solid and you quadruple it. And that is the amount of bullshit that this has. And you have to back me up on that. Having gone through Metal Gear for I mean, dumb. frankly, I'd call that an understatement. But yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we see Lark seeing Axel and Vexen as they mock Vexen's ruptly Riku plan, calling it a failure. Uh, she says that men without hearts are so boring. Oh, very good, Lark scene. Okay. But Vexen's like, you don't have a heart either. It's a good oh, point. It's a really good <laughs> point. Well, the, yeah. <laughs> Well, I don't know. They've all been relevant. Like, he hasn't. Le- 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 Lex, Mister Meathead, Lex Man hasn't. Yes. Yes. But like Vexen's been interesting. Axel's been interesting. Lark scene's been interesting. Uh, maybe gets interesting. And uh, presumably great. Big Baddy. But yeah. Um. Anyhow. Um. Another voice tells them enough and is revealed to be the hooded man. Uh. He un. What? He what? un. He unhoods in a flurry of rose petals because he's a dramatic boy. Oh, yeah, and his flowing that. pink hair falls out of the hood. He's he's like, Vexen, you're a failure. You disappoint me. Um, and he's like, how dare number 11 talk to number four like this? Uh, but Marluxia's is like, bitch, scythed the face. Um, and he's like, bitch, you might be number four, but I was given a whole ass castle and a nominee by our leader. So... Whilst Wait, you're here, not... sit the fuck down. Oh, okay. So he ha- he has a boss. Yes. So, so there is the castle. superior. This is Marluxia is not the head of the organization. Sorry, I'm playing Kingdom Hearts too. I know who the big boss is. Sorry, I don't know. Yeah, I'm like, who's the boss? I was like, oh no, yeah, of course, yeah. Sorry, yeah. What? And, and he's and he's like, well, if, if you go against me in my castle, you're a traitor. Doesn't matter if you're technically higher than me. I'm gonna kill you. Fuck yeah, all right. Um, now Marluxia's uh. Tells him that he needs to prove his plan, saying that he can't defeat Sora, um, leading Vexen to vanish in a huff to go uh, perfect his replicas. Oh, okay. Um, has he made has he made replica Riku? Yes. By this point? Okay. Okay. So I'll, I'll just say this because it's an ongoing plot point. Vexen's Vexen's whole like reoccurring story is that he, he's a scientist working on this replica program right. to essentially create perfect humans. 
And the replicas are like robots, basically. No. They're like DNA. I think it's not like DNA level. They're like, like, like clones. clones. Kind of. It, I'm, it, it's like DNA level, but if the DNA was hearts. Okay, so like magic. It's like it's like heart cloning, kind of. But they have a... a they, it's they, like they, magic clones. So it's pity they can clone other people's hearts and not clone some for themselves. Right. I know, for real. Um, okay. There are so many loopholes in that. <laughs> but um, <laughs> anyway... Back, back to the Disney boys. They've made it to the tenth floor. I'd wow! I've forgotten what he was up to. <laughs> yeah, legit. Jimmy, Jimmy yeah. pops back out of his pocket and he's like, "Oh my god, how many memories have we lost?" <laughs> Sora, should we go home? And Sora's like, "But that would break a, a, the old promise that he made." Oh, which is the promise he made to Kyrie, right? But he thinks it's Namine. That's what he says with. that he promised Namine that he'd keep her safe no matter what. Uh, but we finally meet Vexen, who tells him that he's come to collect Sora's debt. Um, he tells him that he brought Riku to him, and uh, which caused, of course, Sora to go to fight mood and kick his ass. But Vexen's like, ha ha, I was delving into your memories throughout that fight. I was gathering data, ha ha. And that I created a world card from your memories. But we don't actually me- recognize uh, the memories on the other side of the heart. Right. Uh, so he gives he gives Sora the card and vanishes. Meanwhile, Axel tells Marluxia that Sora dying would clearly fuck the organization uh, Wait, why? Do we know? They, they just need it, you know? Okay. Uh, and that Vexen's clearly up to no good, and uh, Marlush is like, Axe, go go deal with Vexen. Go okay. go deal with Vexen. He's being a little shit. Uh, I was going to say that. Why is Vexen just appearing and giving this card and fucking off? And like, oh, Yeah, Vexen like, seems to have like a, his own little yeah. plan going on here. Like All of them in this castle seem to have their own ulterior motives. Cool. I quite Same like way. that. To be fair, I do I do think that's quite an interesting idea. Look, they're much more interesting than blobby black things, I'll tell you that much. Like, they, they each individually, even though we know, like, very little about some of them, they are right. more interesting. So, you go inside the card, and this is, like, the only world that I'm going to kind of talk about. Okay. Because you end up in a world that we don't know, uh, which we learn is called Twilight Town. Okay. See, it's a cute old town. It's got a little, little train running through it. Uh, oh, no, this is definitely all, all drawn by her, isn't it? Uh, so upon arriving, Sora calls a memory from his childhood with Nomine, where there was a meteor shower, she, and she got scared, asking what would happen if one of the meteors hit the island. Sora responded that he'd hit it back and protect her from it. Cute. So, after some Cute time... And weird. <laughs> after some time exploring, you find a mansion in the town. Now, Sora has no memory of this place, but it feels familiar to him. Uh, even though he's very confident that he has never been here. Right. When they arrive, Vexen appears at the gate to the mansion, asking Sora whether his feelings for the mansion or of Nominate are more real. After spouting his usual riddles, he reminds Sora that this place comes from the memories on the other side of his heart. It's not him, but his heart that remembers this place. Mm. If you be, and I, I, I quoted him here saying, if you become bound by the chain of memory, roll credits, and refuse to believe what is truly found inside your heart, then you are not a Keyblade Master. Ooh. Ooh. So, Cutting. of course, Sora smashes Vexen's face in and demands... <laughs> <laughs> it's always the solution. Who's not Keyblade? Who's not Keyblade Master? <laughs> <laughs> and demands that he puts Riku back. Vexen, saying how Riku and him have the fate to sink into the darkness. If they seek nominate, they're going to lose their hearts and end up becoming Marluxia's pawn. So Vexen is clearly now against Marluxia. Yeah, he is yeah. telling Sora what's up. Okay. Um. To which, of course, Axel shows up. Okay. Eating his chakrams of Vexen and telling him he's here to eliminate him. He reminds him that we're nobodies who have no one to be, yet we still are. Uh, then he kind of goes goodbye and vexen catches on fire and dies wow so it's like axel 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 is a fucking badass i mean i'm getting that sense axel is many people's favorite character in the series so Sora's like what are you people and axel's like don't know (laughs) what are you people and and, and axel's like i don't don't know man I, i wonder that too and he just disappears oh god after killing this guy Fade to Axel Arxene and Marluxia and nominates her. Axel questions Marluxia uh, about using Sora to test Vexen, but Larxene says that it was a test for Axel too. See, the two of them have been conniving, uh, Marluxia and Larxene, and they didn't know if they could trust Axel. Wait, hold on, because Axel and Larxene were talking earlier about betraying Marluxia, so Larxene's been fucking no, around. No, 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 no. 
They want to betray the organization. Right. right. Marluxia is in on that as well. Okay. So it was originally Larkseen and Marluxia, and then Axel joined in, but they didn't know if they could trust Axel. So, but she's like, eh, you know, you, you killed a guy, so you're you're cool. Uh, you can join our gang. Keep they decide, going. I think it's time to let Sora meet Nominee. Okay. Um, so Nomine is like, I don't know about this, bro. Uh, and we return to uh, we return to Sora, and he finds Repka Riku standing guard uh, in front of Nomine's room. Regardless of Vex, in his heart, uh, regardless of what Vex said, in his heart, he seems to believe that Sora is truly a threat to Nomine. And he's like, I made a promise. Um, and then proceeds to recount the exact same memory Sora had about the oh. meteor shower and hitting away. Oh. The meteor. Oh, um, and, and, and they argue, he doesn't know who he is. Like he has no yeah, yeah, concept no, 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 of no. what his goddamn. Yeah, yeah. And, they, and they both argue, and they're like, and they're like, no, that I had the real memory. And I had the real memory. And Sora's like, but look at my charm. And Riku's like, that's a fake. Look at my charm. <laughs> um, and they fight. Oh, you, yeah. you, you beat him, and he runs away, dropping his charm. Sora picks it up, and uh, it turns into the world card for Destiny Islands. Right. Right, okay, okay, we're going back. All right. yeah, 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 so Sora runs off, um, becoming almost manically frantic about rescuing Nominee. Right. Uh, and, and Google's like, ah, you, you good, bro? Uh, <laughs> th- they kind of think that Nominee is all that he really talks about, or thinks about even, for somebody that he didn't even remember until like an hour ago. Donald's like, you're being a bad friend. <laughs> Donald's like, why does she have a key? Who's fucking talking? Yeah, who's like, does she, does have, she a have a key? So um, look who's fucking talking, Donald, you little fuck. So they're like, bro, 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 slow down and think. And Sora's like, fuck you, and runs off. <laughs> so we flash over to Nominee and Axel, where he's telling her that she's all that Sora has left. But that she can stop this before it's too late. He hits that Marluxia isn't around to get in her way, kind of in the room right now. Um, If she were to do anything, spurring her on to flee from the room. Oh, okay. As she runs out the door, he kind of whispers to make it count. Mm. Uh, float back to Riku, who in the dark room, Lexius and Zexian have just learned that Axel has killed Vexen. Uh, they worry that despite him being stronger than Vexen, he's potentially under Nomine's control. Uh, they, however, reiterate that the superior needs Sora so they can't strike Axel down. Who's the superior? Marluxia or, or this the other figure? The superior is no, no. above Marluxia. Cool, cool, cool. Okay. So the superior is even Marluxia's boss. However, they do reiterate that the superior needs Sora so they can't strike Sora down. Right. Too correct. Uh, however, they can't use Riku's... They might be able to use Riku's darkness to control Sora. Mm, mm-hmm. So back to real Riku... He pulls out his final world card, questioning if finishing this world will finally allow him to be free of the darkness. Uh, that world is, um, Halloween Town. I'm not really sure if that's meant to be, like, an edgy joke. (laughs) Like, like an edgy darkness. Maybe dealing with the Halloween Town will make me defeat (laughs) my darkness. Yeah, okay. But, yeah, so he, he goes in there and we go back to Sora. So Sora enters his own final world, Destiny Islands, where Nomine appears. She tells Sora that she messed up and that this isn't how they should have met. Mm. Um, she reveals that she was the one who originally called out to Sora and led him to Castle Oblivion. Oh, okay. Sora says that, you know, of course he came back. He promised. But Nomine apologizes, saying that she shouldn't be in this picture. So she didn't send Sora, Donald, and Goofy Mickey's letter. Yes, that is yes. a... Se- oh, okay. Right. Okay. Cool. Uh, cool. Cool. All right. So she, which keep in mind, they never read the letter. They just saw Pluto with a letter that seems to be from Mickey, <laughs> chased after it. They never found Pluto. I like that Pluto slowed down enough for him to go. And you've seen the handwriting, and I'm off. <laughs> <laughs> so we never see this elusive letter from the start of the game. Mm. So we can question if that was nominee. Or whether the spooky robed voice, which we think is Marluxia, but may have been nominated. We don't know. Cool. But in any case, she says that she uh, called for him to be here. Um, but then, behind her, the real nominee appears. What? Oh, oh okay. As a force ghost. This isn't the real... So keep in mind that Destiny Islands here is recreated from Sora's memory. 
stores memories that currently contain Naminé. Is is a as... false memory about having exactly. spent time with oh, Naminé back there. Exactly. Okay. So we have both memory, quote unquote, Naminé, as well as now real Naminé. Now, real Naminé is here's a force ghost. Cool. Um, but she says uh, that this one is made of memories. It's not real. Um, and that she doesn't exist in his or anyone else's hearts. Oh. That she doesn't exist at all. Oh, you know, big sad. Um, she asks him if it's really her that he's been wanting to see. To which he pulls out the charm, supposedly representing their promise. The memory nominate. The memory nominate is excited that he has it, but the ghost one says that the memory one can't be believed. Right. She urges him to remember who's really most important to him. Causing the charm to turn back into Kyrie's charm, and memory nominee to turn into memory Kyrie. Cool. However, whilst we he recognizes her, he isn't able to remember her name. Also, he doesn't recognize. So he recognizes Kyrie. He recognizes that Kyrie is. is somebody that he should know, but he doesn't know her name. Oh, okay. Uh, Sora leaves the Destiny Islands and catches up to the real nominee in Castle Oblivions. Uh, he finally recognizes that he doesn't actually know nominee. She begins to explain what she's been doing, but is interrupted by Replica Riku showing up. Uh, he, of course, is still high on Protect Nominee Juice and <laughs> thinks that Sora's messed up memories are getting in his way, so we slap him up around a bit and tell him to get good. <laughs> so, for Replica, this is his third fight of the game where he's just come and going, Yeah! <laughs> and he's just had his ass kicked again. Yeah, he's, he's not great. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so Riku blasts Sora back with the darkness and goes in for the final blow, but is stopped by Naminé, causing Replica Riku to call her to the floor. Or to fall to the floor. <laughs> Larkseen appears, saying that his heart was broken Aww. Uh, by Naminé getting in his way. She tells Sora not to worry, though, because Riku was never really there. He was just a puppet made by Vexen and filled with memories created by Naminé, as we know. So cool. now Sora knows it's Replica. It's not real Riku. Uh... Larkseen reveals that Naminé has the power to enter, mix around, and create new memories, just as she's been doing to him. Mm. She goes on to say that they were so close to having him be their puppet, but Axel betrayed them and used Naminé to help him for his own amusement, given that she needs to eliminate Axel. Oh, or okay. Sora. No, she needs to eliminate Sora. I need to be more specific with names in a game that has 30 characters instead of just using pronouns. <laughs> <laughs> um, so Naminé gets between Larkseen and Sora to protect him, only to be just kind of swatted by Larkseen. Cool. Um, even knowing his memories are fake, though, Sora still feels that the promise he made to nominate was real. Okay. And fights Larkseen to protect her. Um, <laughs> sorry, and man. you don't just beat Larkseen, you murder her. She dies. Oh! Larkseen dies. <laughs> wow. Oh, shit. Okay. Yay! So... <laughs> Does she also, like, burst into flame? What happens to no, her? No, the flame is just... Axel has fire powers. Right, right. Uh, Set him with fire when, fire. when they die, they kind of turn into dark squigglies and fame. Oh, and then disappear. Okay. Yeah, 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 so... <clears throat> she died. Jesus, all right. Yeah, so uh, Duper finally shows back up, and the three meet Naminé properly. She finally reveals that she's been slowly replacing the people and memories in Sora's heart with false memories. She's also been making the others lose memories, although not replacing theirs with anything. Cool. Uh, she tells them that if they can get to the 13th floor, that she can fix their memories, but that she's worried about Marluxia, hmm. uh, who's been keeping her prisoner in the castle for so long, uh, and has been using this to manipulate her into giving herself a friend. Oh. I know, oh, isolated, okay. and he's like, "You can have a friend. You just gotta put him, put yourself in his memories." What a cunt! Yeah, what a prick. Uh, she cries. Of course, Sora's like, "Don't cry," uh, saying that he's not happy that she messed with her memories, but that he couldn't actually be mad about it. What a good boy. Mm. Uh, he's willing to accept the memories, even knowing they're fake. Um, he tells her to look after Replica Riku, and he goes to deal with Marluxia. Rack. To Riku, leaving Halloween Town, he's met by Lexius. Just as with the others, he calls Riku a coward for refusing to use the darkness and urges him... What is this it. weapon? That was my question. That looks like a keyblade. It's not. It's just, it's a, just a big It's sword. just a weird-shaped short sword club thing. Okay. So none of these... Keyblades are have... very explicitly key-shaped. You can tell True. when something is a key. Mm. This is just a weird sword. So none of the these people have keyblades. That's... They do not. Cool. As okay. of right now, 
we only know of two Keyblades in existence, Sora's and, um... The one that Maleficent made, uh, made. slash Riku made. No, that one's gone. Remember that one turned... Remember that that one turned back into the Princesses of Lighthearts. So, so Sora's and Mickey's. Now. Uh, Mickey's and well, Mickey's. Yeah. So there's, there's two. Cool, okay. So, uh... You win the fight, but Riku swatted aside by Lexius. Cool. Um... And Riku's like, oh no, I'm losing. Darkness time! Ooh. Um, Wait, no, no, we don't want this. This is bad for him, right? Uh-huh. So he's now speaking in Ansem's voice again. He goes uh-huh. too slow and strikes down Lexius. Ooh, okay. <laughs> uh, causing Lexius to give the line, so you are the superiors. Forgive me, Zexian. Uh, so Riku awakens in an inky darkness to Ansem's voice. He tells Riku that there's more... But the more he thinks about him, the closer his return comes, and that Riku's heart will be his. But as he approaches Riku, King Mickey, force ghosts into the darkness to what? protect Riku. Oh no, what? Woo! Oh, and Riku gets his body back. It is me to the rescue. Back to Sora. He pulls out his charm, trying to remember who the actual one who's most important to him is. But still, he can only remember Nomine. Fearing the lost memories, the trio makes a promise to each other that they'll always be there for each other. One for all... And all for one. Oh yeah, that's their catchphrase, right? From one, I remember that, and well, two, I think as well. It's from, yeah. I mean, I know it's the Musketeers, but they like yeah. they do it, right? It's a thing that they do. Yeah, I okay. think so. I don't know. I I've left out a lot of little. No. So finally, um, so as as to this point, all the actual gameplay levels have been in Disney Worlds. Finally, we get a gameplay level in Castle Oblivion itself. Ooh, We're yeah. no longer running through Disney Worlds. We are running through Castle Oblivion itself. Cool. Um, And I will say this here because it's not actually revealed um, in the next game, but what we learn is that from this point to the end of the game is about two weeks. They right. run through because apparent Castle Oblivion has the power awesome. to kind of warp itself and change itself to lose people in it. So, does it feel like an hour to them? Is that the idea? Or does it feel like two weeks? It's not really explained, okay. to be honest. Um, we only really know that timeline because of uh, the next game. Right. Okay. Not the next game. The game after the next game. Right. Right. Okay. Um, <laughs> <laughs> sure. When we get some more information about this game. <laughs> God, kill me. Uh, yeah, sure. But it's about two weeks until they finally reach the 13th floor. Mm. Where, at the top of Castle Oblivion, Axel approaches Marluxia. After after arguing about which one of them is actually the traitor. Because, you know, he traitor to him, but also Marluxia traded the we organization. Traitor, yeah. it's, two, it's just two guys gaslighting each other we again. Dead. We were doing a traitor together. <laughs> and then you just gaslight central this game. <laughs> um, and they fight each other. Mid-fight, right, okay. though, Marluxia summons Nomine and uses her as a shield. Ooh. <gasps> Axel thinks that... Axel thinks that isn't going to work, but at that moment, Sora appears behind him. Oh, God. Okay. Marluxia tells Sora that Axel's going to harm Nominate to get to him, causing Sora to fight Axel. Oh, oh. Annoying. What a bastard. Axel is defeated, and Sora runs after Marluxia. Marluxia demands that Nominate erase Sora's memory, but reveals that if she does, that Sora's heart is going to be destroyed. Is that true? Yeah. Okay. So. I know we should in this, game, by in this game we right? kind of learned so remember how I said earlier that the heart is the core of the people yeah, yeah. And you, the heart is also very intrinsically linked with your memories mm-hmm. and by like in inside the heart the memories the, the this chain of memories comprises who you are as a person right so, so yeah okay. your experiences make you who you are exactly and define what kind of heart you have I like exactly. that as a as a I, I honestly like I risk of getting slightly too deep here right about fucking Kingdom Hearts <laughs> I really like that as like a message for how they are building their characters yeah. I know that everything is retconned and whatever and bullshit right but I like that Nomura has sat down and gone no this is what I straight up believe like your experiences make you who you are nature yeah. versus nurture blah 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 so blah, essentially blah, if yeah. you lose memories or even if you lose all your memories, you lose parts of yourself. Mm. And if you lose them all, you lose your heart overall. Cool. Okay. Um. So you beat Axel, and Sora runs after Marluxia. Cool. Uh, I will note, you don't kill Axel. You right. just beat him. Right. Cool, I'll, cool, I'll cool. note that, because we like Axel. However, because Sora showed her kindness, even after learning the truth, Nomine's like, nah, bro, I'm not on your face. I'm not on your side. I'll, you know, d- do what you will, Marluxia. 
Well, you can't Namine, like, fuck with Marluxia's memories no. to make him, like, you know, an impotent, basically? No, oh. and we'll get to that. Okay. Um, so Sora, though, he's like, nah, fam, I made a promise to Namine. I'm gonna protect her forever. Um, why, why does Sora still think that's the case? So... Sora, do- Sora knows that that's a fake memory. Right. But he's accepted it as his new truth. Right, okay. Um, cool. Because he remembers her now parallel to Kyrie. And, and he's like, this girl's in trouble and, and I'm going to help exactly. her. It's still important yeah. to me. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. His, yeah. His, his good boy senses are activating and he's like, okay. I'm, even if it, even if it was boy. all fake. Such a good boy. I kind of I, like, I like that for him. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. good for you, Sora. It's very interesting. Yeah. Because... Like, you could argue that Namini's been like, look, we obviously all feel sorry for Namini, but like Namini's been a bit of a prick the whole game, mm-hmm. like rewriting his memories. And I like that Sora learns that and his first instinct isn't fuck you, it's I need to help you. Yeah, you exactly. You're clearly like having a shit yeah. time of it and I'm here to help. Exactly. Um, I like that. Good for him. So Marlisha tells him that without his heart, he's going to be just like Rebel Kariku, cool. who in perfect timing leaps through a dark portal and hits Marlisha in the head. Hey! hey. Um, fuck you, Marlisha. Replica Riku now as well uh, recognizes and accepts that his heart and body are lies. But like Sora, he's going to treat his promise to Prak Nominate as real and he is going to keep her safe from Marluxia. Cool. Yeah. Fair. Um, to which we get the cool line. You would knowingly shackle your hearts with a chain of memories born from lies. Oh, roll credits. Mm-hmm. Which is... Yes. Yeah. That, that's a cool line. One more yeah. time. Give me oh, one yeah. more time. Yeah. You would knowingly shackle your heart with a chain of memories born of lies. Whoa. Oh. He said the thing. That is a Ooh. wonderful line. That is a really good line. Good stuff. I... Shakespearean that. <laughs> wait, wait till some later lines. They get... Um, <laughs> you fight back and beat Marluxia, but it's quickly revealed that Marluxia is using imitations. And that way you defeated... It's just an illusion. It's not the real Marluxia. Fuck you. Ha. <laughs> but Sora can feel his power trying to crush his heart. Um, he tells Rep Kariku to protect Nominate, making up with him in a way, and goes after Marluxia for the final confrontation. Cool. In the final room, Marluxia turns into a badass Rose Ooh. Scythe Grim Reaper. That's fucking And it's a sick. very cool boss. Yeah. So you beat Marluxia, um, and he disappears... As he dies, he disappears into a cloud of roses. Ah, uh, because he is an extra fuck. Uh, even is he dead? Is he like gone? Marluxia for... is dead. Cool. Yeah, because I don't remember him in Kingdom Hearts. Too. No, cool. even in death. So what a, yeah. the only yeah. remaining extra, living extra ones boy. currently are Axel and Zexion. Wow, we be like killing straight up, yeah. like just like killing people this game. Okay, yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah. So, a lot of dead guys. Uh, so going back to Riku, cool. uh, elsewhere in the castle, Riku smells that incredibly strong smell. Oh, is it Ansem? That has just disappeared. Oh. It was Marluxia. Oh, that roses, isn't it? Yeah. That makes sense, yeah. Heavy scent. Well, it's the smell of darkness, but... Okay, so the roses didn't mean anything in the end. The roses were oh, just it, for banter. That's just, it's, <laughs> it's aesthetic. Okay. Uh, Zexion appears um, to tell him that Marluxia's been filled by Sora. Um... And it's filled, only filled by Sora. Felled. <laughs> felled. Oh, sorry. Yeah, I heard and you say it. It's, <laughs> it's, only, it's only now, actually, that Riku even actually learns that Sora's been here the whole time. Yeah. Riku yeah. never knew that until now. Oh, bless him. So why is he telling Riku this? What's the... Uh, what's the play? I, 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 he's alone? I don't know. Well, okay. <laughs> Everybody else is dead. Is he just here to, like, fuck with Riku? Is that his purpose here? Uh... I'm gonna make you a baddie, I guess. I forget, but sure, no, that's fine. That's Zexion fine. Yeah. teases Riku, asking him if he can really face Sora, who is fated to defeat the darkness, while he's still steeped in the darkness. What a prick! Uh, Fuck and this guy. he Jesus. gives Riku the world card for Destiny Islands and disappears. Ah, uh, very good. Okay. So now, now he gets his. Uh, but before we go there, Sora. Uh, back to Sora. Marluxia is defeated, and Sora runs out the room, <laughs> and for some reason seals it. Um, legitimately. I looked everywhere on forums for a reason as to why he seals it, and it literally seems to be just to keep with the thematics because we hadn't had him seal any keyholes in this game. Right. <laughs> it seems like so. He- is he like healed the heart of Castle Oblivion? No. Castle Oblivion doesn't no. have a heart, right? No. no. He-, he didn't seal anything metaphysical. He literally sealed the physical door to Marluxia's bedroom. I mean, to be to be honest, if I was Sora, I would do that <laughs> just in case he comes back. He, he used his keyblade to lock Marluxia's dead body in his room. <laughs> No one's gonna bury you, you rosy yes, that's, fuck. That's, that's, that is going double Dutch, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. If somebody can shout down in the comments as to why this was, because legitimately it 
it truly seems to be only because we we hadn't up to this point had him lock any doors and we needed at least one scene of Sora locking something with his keyblade. <laughs> yeah, one per game at least. Just to keep with the thematics. <laughs> um, I truly do not know if there's a better reason. Um, cool. So, <laughs> Replica Riku uh, starts talking about how none of his memories are real, but he's going to deal with that. Um, he's going to take uh, the memories and build his own personality around them, accepting them as his own. Yeah, cool. Okay. And Replica Riku leaves Castle Oblivion. Cool. Donald asks Namine if she can put their memories back, and she tells him that for- forgetting their memories doesn't mean they're gone. Uh, see, her pa- she can't delete any memories in her powers. She's just able to rearrange them. Right. So, and remembering memories triggers other memories. They're linked. You say she like can't delete shape. memories. Is it not her that was making people forget stuff? We're getting there. So, okay. <laughs> <laughs> remembering memories triggers other memories because they're linked, like a chain. Yeah. She doesn't erase any links. She just takes them apart and rearranges them. <sighs> so if they're not in the correct order, are you really going to remember things properly? Right. Okay. Cool. If she kind of throws a single person into a completely unrelated context, are you going to remember that person? Cool. Um, so she says that she can fix their memories, but first she needs to undo the chain of memories that she's created, meaning that none of them are going to actually remember what happened in this castle. Right. Uh, she gives Sora the choice of which memories he wants to retain, the true ones or the created ones. Ob- he chooses his real ones, but it breaks Nomine's heart. Oh, yeah. Big well, sad. Yeah, yeah. Nomine brings Sora to a room where in the center is a large pod, resembling a bloomed flower. Mm. Don't know if that's symbolic, but it's cute. Uh, to remember his memories, Sora's going to have to sleep in it while Nominee works. Uh, they're sad that they're not going to remember Nominee, but Jiminy puts a little note to thank Nominee in his journal, so at least we have a lead Aww. to go on uh, in remembering her. I feel like Jiminy could have written, like, thank Nominee, here's a quick paragraph on what's just happened. Oh. As, we've, as we've discussed, for the writing to be legible for humans, <laughs> yeah. he has to run across a page with a pen and... <laughs> um, I, He'd need to run at least two miles to make like to that say, work. I, yeah. Maybe I'm projecting here, but if I was Sora, how delighted I'd be that my next mission is just to sleep for a bit. <laughs> like, as someone who doesn't sleep very well, like if she's just like, can you go in this pod and sleep? I've been in this castle for weeks. You're fucking right. I'll go in a pod and sleep. Like, that, yeah. Sora, your next plan is to wait for Kingdom Hearts 2? <laughs> fucking yes. Uh, so in the darkness of the pod, uh, or as Sora enters the pod, he and Namine say how they're truly happy they met each other, and Sora swears that he's going to find her when he wakes up to create real memories with her. Mm. Oh. They pinky promise on this, oh. and Sora hops in his pod, what is, what's which closes. The thing? I cry, every, you cry, everybody cries. <laughs> I cry, you cry, everybody <laughs> cries. Yeah, yeah, love it. Uh, in the darkness of the pod, Sora focuses on Kairi's charm, trying to remember. He recalls his friends along the journey, forcing the chain that ultimately results in him remembering Kairi's name. Yeah. Nominee appears in his memories one last time, saying that while he'll forget about her, but with her promise, she can come back. She'll always oh. be in his heart, forgotten, but not lost. So Nominee can't great. leave. This is this is really good. Uh, really good. Nominee can't, like, leave the castle and go to Traverse Town, for example, and, like, well, chill with she, people. She and can. Like, right. Uh, <laughs> oh, okay. I've titled, I've titled this section, Shriku Sora is sleeping. <laughs> <laughs> Sure, yeah. Um, <laughs> I had a great time writing these notes. <laughs> uh, so with the end credits rolled on Sora's journey, let's wrap up Ricky Boy. And that is the end credits roll there. That is the end of Chain of Memories as Sora's story as goes. Sora. So of course, after that, you go into R- Riku's story. The irony is, right, uh, Like it's bizarre to me because Chain of Memories, even if you remove Riku's story, which you've given us as we go, mm-hmm. makes pretty much no sense like it, on its on its own it makes very little sense on its own aside from the the Namini and Sora relationship yes aside from that you then need to beat chain of memories yes. and to unlock Riku's story yes fuck me and then what we've learned from doing this is Riku's story has so much like really pivotal plot shit yes. happening in it Riku plays through the heartless invasion of Destiny Island ultimately winding up at its ultimate destruction right Zexion appears and blames the de- destruction on Riku. Cool. Uh, he, he, he reveals that Riku hated being an Islander and that it was Riku in Kingdom Hearts 1 who originally opened the door to the heart of Destiny Islands. Cool. We knew that already, right? Or did we just infer that you in- cleverly? You inferred that. It wasn't a Cool, theory. cool. Okay. 
You're, you're, you two are just smart. Hell yeah, yeah. Like, I remember um, picking that up. So which of course, smarter than a kid's game. Let in, <laughs> which, of course, let in the darkness, destroying the heart, and beginning Riku's own descent into the darkness. Cool. Memory of Riku turns into a dark side, representing Riku's darkness, and a cool. classic dark side battle commences. Cool. <laughs> um, so Riku defeats the dark side, and Riku sees Sora and calls out to him. But Sora draws his keyblade to attack Riku. Sora says how he can see what Riku has become and uses his keyblade to shoot a beam of light at Riku, knocking him back. Sora, Sora questions. But Sora's in the pod. This is memory, Sora. Remember that we're on memory Destiny Island. Cool, cool, cool. Because there was also memory Riku a second ago. So this is memory, Sora. Okay. Uh, so Sora questions how the light hurt him, asking if he's really become a creature of the dark. Uh, Sora doesn't see Riku now, just a pawn of the darkness. Sora summons the light ready to erase Riku. Oh, God. Oh. Is that how Riku sees Sora? That's pretty fucked. <laughs> I mean, he sees him as the hero of the light. So if he sees himself as darkness, yeah. then of course, to himself, he is something that the the light has to defeat. So I, I think it's more a, a, him talking about himself than he is see, talking about how yeah. he sees yeah, Sora. Um, so while watching the light, Riku feels himself fading. But as he digs deeper into the light, he sees Kairi. Uh, she says that he can't fade as neither light nor dark can defeat Riku. Both is, are going to make him stronger. Darkness in his heart is vast and deep, but facing it will allow him to steal his resolve. Recognizing it, but not giving into it, will give him a strength like no other. Okay. Kyrie tells him that in following the darkness, he's going to find the way to his friends. So Kyrie kind of tells him, cool. you can accept the darkness. Yeah. Darkness isn't, isn't inherently evil. Yeah, and we do learn this later is... It's meant to be in a balance, and it's kind of the balance is skewed towards light. What is the benefit of darkness? There's nothing. Just like there's no benefit so to light. Like, it's, it's They're really... just too. But the darkness creates the heartless, which are bad. That eats why are worlds. they bad? Because they eat worlds. By their very nature, they no. destroy life. They just turn those worlds into darkness, which kills life. No, the life just moves to the realm of darkness. Nobody dies when a world... They just get moved to the realm of darkness with the world. I suppose what we're saying is, is this not all life? Look, so I'm, I, I th I'm currently with the state I'm at, right? And I, I know that we're slightly moving away and we're very close to the end, presumably, right? But I have, qu I have quite sincere questions about this. So we have light and dark. Yes. And I know that you said that there are a bunch of different other things, right? But for, for the sake of right now, in this moment, I am seeing light and dark as the quote-unquote good side of the force and the dark side of the force. Right? As of and right now, that is a fair assessment. Right. And, um, and, 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 no, 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 but, 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 so, at least in Star Wars, right, to use Star Wars this example. This is Star Wars! No, I know, I know, but the comparison, I think, makes sense. At least in Star Wars, the understanding is that the dark side of the Force can do things and give you particularly strong power, which the light side of the Force can't but give you. you. Is, does the darkness do that? Yes. yes. But also, For example, a parallel okay. with Star Wars that I was going to bring up earlier, with, especially with Riku being the perfect example. Right. Especially in, like, the expanded shit in Star Wars and in, and even in, like, Clone Wars Rebel stuff. I know nothing. Thing about Star we Wars, that there are <laughs> there are characters, and even in the best modern Star films, the Star Wars film, The Last Jedi, getting uh, <laughs> uh, follows up on themes of focusing too much on either side is to your detriment. Yeah, and the best characters are the ones that embrace both. Yeah, that, no, 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 that's that's totally fine. But I think you're slightly misunderstanding me here. I'm not here to talk about the Last Jedi. I don't care about the Last Jedi in this. No, I don't because whatever, right? I'm talking primarily about. Let's talk about prequels momentarily, and I know we're getting sidetracked, but I think this is very relevant. In the prequels, we learn that the dark side of the Force has the potential, and this is then confirmed in the sequels in a roundabout way, despite it being a load of bullshit. The, the dark side of the force can keep you alive. It can bring people back to life. We have a tangible benefit of the dark side of the force. What is the tangible benefit of darkness? You can be super powerful. Travel between worlds, phenomenal power. Turn yourself into a meat boat. Turn yourself into a meat boat. <laughs> yeah, no, but no, no, I'm being serious here because Nomura has not at this point translated any tangible benefit to the darkness to me, which the light doesn't already give. Where the light's portals between worlds, where is... The light's phenomenal power. How does Mickey get about? Surely it's through light portals. Mickey has a gummy ship. Oh, okay, okay. <laughs> Mickey has a spaceship. I forget he has a fleet. <laughs> yeah, he has a fleet. Okay, so aside from being able to portal about and everything being purple and black and horrible, also, I, I'm just—it's just—I think also, it's a relevant who point. Says like, Mickey isn't using the darkness. 
Uh, fair. Remember that Mickey has a Keyblade of Darkness. But, but I mean, aside from the violence, because uh, we, we understand, presumably through gameplay and stuff, that, right, the darkness makes you strong and powerful. Like, aside through that, through the violence of that, what is the tangible benefit of darkness? Light grows things. No, no, darkness no, no, no. doesn't. Just, you're just describing now what you were saying about yeah, Star Wars. Dark. There are but powerful, there are powerful, darkness. there are powerful benefits to the dark side in Star Wars. It keeps you alive in a very depressing fucking way, and yeah. not a rewarding way. It's exactly the same thing you're describing. Does here. this picture it gives you power look good to, to you? Like no, no but okay, but again, in side. the early games, at least, dark was evil, light was good. Right. That's not up for debate. At this point, no, that's right. Right. but this this is the game where it appears that the message is to Riku that embracing the darkness is fine. No, we're, we're, we're very close, right? Look, the, the point is that the message of Chain of Memories, presumably so far in Riku's storyline, is that embracing the darkness is totally cool, man. Just don't make it a, your, your entire personality or no, whatever, I think right? I think, speaking as someone who's... And that just, looks bad to speaking me. Speaking as someone who's just come into this, you've played a lot of these, the main, have, like, the main like, games. If I'm speaking as the person who's just come into this, mm -hmm. it has been very clearly conveyed to me the dark is all consuming and corrupting and bad, mm -hmm. and you should be very careful of staying yeah, away also, from it. But light, I mean, at this moment, Kyrie has just said that memory but, Kyrie said that's okay. The light does not give you the same power that the dark does. The right. light is a force of peace and a force of. It, it does give okay. strength, but it doesn't give the same raw power. power that the darkness does. To wrap this up before you jump into the f final thing then, I have a question. And I, I, yes. I, want, I want a very sincere answer, which okay. I know that your, your answer is going to be probably predicated upon there are other games which retcon things because Kingdom Hearts is bullshit, right? right? At this stage, retcon. at this stage, to your knowledge, and don't give me a specific example, don't spoil anything, but at this stage, do, with the knowledge, that, the full series knowledge that you have, does the darkness provide any tangible benefit aside from power and attacking and violence? Yes. Yes? Yes. yes. Like an active good thing that would benefit a person or humankind. Yes. yes. Which, Which is, is not, not corrupting. corrupting. Yes. yes. I feel like Fair enough. jumping no, that's into spoilers. No, wait, no, that's me, so, so. No, Chase, that's, that's great. That's pretty much what I want to know. Because right now, the, the message seems to be Riku, Light and Dark are both good. And I feel like the message I've been sent so far is they're not, though. It's no, Nobody's saying they're good. But who said they were good at this point? So, anyhow. <laughs> yeah, go no, ahead. Yeah. Finish off. <laughs> uh, he a Riku asks, following Kyrie telling him to use the darkness, if he can truly face them, meaning Sora, causing Kyrie, as well as a parallel apparition of Nomine, to ask uh, if he doesn't want to. Of course, Riku wants to, accepting his darkness, turning into dark Riku, and striking through the light of Sora. Right. Okay. Who is revealed... To have been Zaxian. Oh, okay. So uh, it wasn't posing, just posing as Sora. Cool. Uh, he's a stanky little boy. Smells now, like Chad, you said he turns into Dark Riku. Are we talking? He's got the outfit. Yeah. yeah, yeah. He reverts okay. back to that nasty fucking. Yeah. So this was a test of some kind of test, was it? Kind of, yeah. Yeah. Um. So you strike Zaxian down. And he's taken back by why Riku isn't frightened of the darkness anymore. Uh, you, you beat his ass again, and he runs away. Cool. Back in his dark room, Zexine doesn't understand what Riku is, saying how no one has ever worked with the darkness in a way that he does. Right. Uh, so everybody... Like, without being corrupted by it. Exactly. Everybody used the darkness as a corrupting force for power. He is using it in a whole new way. It's like he's right. confronted his own past exactly. with it, and he's... Yeah. Exactly. Cool. Um... So, Axel and Replica Riku appear before Zexion. Axel asks Replica Riku if he'd like to be real, and that he just needs to gain the power that Riku doesn't have. We love how Replica Riku just fully accepted himself back at the end of Sora's story, and now Axel's like, but what if? <laughs> um, and, and he tells him that he can become his own person, not Riku or anyone else. Um, so he's not saying you can take over Riku and become Riku. He's saying you can become your own person. Yeah. Just because uh, you look like him doesn't mean you need yeah. to be him. So Axel tells Replica Riku that uh, Zexion is a place great to start, and Replica Riku absorbs him in his power, ending Zexion's life. Oh my god. <laughs> Zexion's, Zexion's dead. Wow. The what? He just, he just like uh, just beat him and absorbed him and so killed him. Yeah, he's at this point, taking oh, yeah. all their uh, stories of Axel is the only one that's still alive the out of the six from the met. six that we've met that is still alive again alright okay to clarify here though Replica Riku bad guy 
Like, well, I know he's a villain, but no, bad bloke. Well, Rebecca yeah. Meekham is created with no identity. Yeah. And, yeah. Been and his, his and means of curing that is um, to absorb well, somebody. Unlike actual but the guy Riku, who's, like, fucking with him and who's been experimenting yeah. on him and, like... Unlike you know, actual Riku, who is now confronted and accepted his darkness, Rebecca Riku is still two months back where he is fully in the corrupting depths. Of oh, the yeah, okay, okay. So, so this is like Kingdom Hearts 1 Riku. But exactly, like, okay, yeah, okay. exactly. Cool. So back in uh, Castle of Vin, Ansem comes back to Riku. Cool. Uh, because, you know, Riku failed his test, supposedly. He went into the darkness. And he takes control of Riku, freezing him in place, and telling him that the deeper the darkness runs, the stronger he's going to become. Yep. But just in time... The rat appears. Mickey! He's uh, black. But this time, he's in his soft little flesh body. Oh, he's, he's not a force ghost anymore. <clears throat> How? Uh, because he, he's just finally arrived at the castle. So, oh. up to this point, he's just been kind of projecting. He's, he's been. Oh, he was doing like a force projection. Literally yeah, a, a yeah, Star yeah, Wars yeah, thing. Yeah, 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 okay, right. He's, okay. he's been like on his way, but he hasn't gotten there yet. And he's been like. To be fair, thrown his... this did this before Star Wars. I would, yeah. not be, I would not be surprised that I'm half kidding here. That if Kingdom Hearts 4 incorporates Marvel and Star Wars, which we you would expect from Disney, it, right? Almost yeah. certainly will. That, that we are going to have moments where we learn that Mickey learnt this trick from a Jedi. Like, I'm not kidding. That is literally a Star Wars thing oh, from the Star Wars playbook. How I assume the canonicity will go, I highly doubt it. But that's sure, sure, yeah, fair enough, other yeah. things. Anyhow, um, God, why do we keep getting on Star Wars? I don't even like Star Wars. Yeah, okay, no fair. <laughs> um, so Riku is just so believed that he's relieved that he's finally not alone and asks how Mickey got here. Mickey reveals that he found the Twilight Town card, which allowed him to see Riku's heart through the darkness because the darkness... Because the card felt that its place was to be with Rick or some sh- I don't know. I literally wrote, I don't fucking know here. Yeah, this is losing the plot a bit with Mickey and Riku. Ricky found Riku, it's fine. I'm here for it. Mickey found the card. It brought him to Riku. And we're going to leave it at that. Great. Mickey gives Riku the card and they go to Trav- <laughs> Twilight Town. Okay. Where they are immediately met again by Ansem, who tells Riku he must battle him and his dark powers all alone. But Ooh. Riku ain't having it. Uh, because that old guy smells funny. <laughs> um, and not like Ansem funny, that shit reeks. Okay. This guy's, uh, this guy's a different funny. It's like, yeah, I can't fight you, you stink, man. I just can't concentrate. Yeah, not so, close. yeah. Riku finally understands that it's a, it's a different stink. This isn't Ansem. It was never Ansem. Okay. This whole time, remember, Ansem's dead. This yeah. was never Ansem. Right. <laughs> it was somebody pretending to be Ansem, oh. who's been leading him there, including leaving Mickey the card, Ansem confirms this, transforming himself into the Mummy Man Diz, voiced by Christopher Lee. What? Christopher fucking Lee's in this. Christopher <laughs> fucking Lee's in this. Oh, I my knew this. God. I knew this. <laughs> yeah, 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 I knew this. Oh, I am all in. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. The fucking Mummy Man. We oh. hate Diz. Diz is a cunt. He tells Riku that he exists in the twilight between light and dark, and that he must meet Nominate and make a choice. This is Riku that he's referring to. Right. Uh, he disappears and Riku journeys onwards and into the Twilight Town mansion. What? Uh, Riku suspects that Nominate's in this mansion, but before he can enter, he's met by Replica Riku. Replica Riku can tell that he isn't afraid of the dark anymore. He's all grown up. Uh, Replica rages about being a fake. He reveals that even though he gained a great power, presumably by absorbing people, he hasn't been able to become somebody. He's still empty. As long as Riku's around, he's just going to be a shadow. Uh... Obviously, you beat the shit out of him. <laughs> yeah. Um. And uh, he dies. <laughs> Wait, what? Really? I feel really well, sorry for Replica. Yeah, he, he, he dies, but um, fuck him. But yeah, as man, as as really as he's dying, it. he's like, oh, it doesn't even matter. I wasn't even real. Yeah. Oh, I feel really awful for Replica. I know. It's really no. Sad. He just absorbed the guy. Like yeah, I'm. But that's what I was feeling he was for born, him. He but... was born about two days ago, and this he's been fucked around. He doesn't know what's what. He's been told to do this. You're bad. That brings the darkness. No wonder he's so, fucked up. Replica dealt with. Riku enters the manage, the manage, the mansion, and finds Nomine in the pod room, which, I guess, it was never in Castle Oblivion. It's been in Twilight Town this whole time. Sure. Wait, uh, keep going. Uh, sure, sure yeah, going. sure, yeah, I buy it, um, yeah. <laughs> we do have vague canonical understanding as to why this is, but I'll get to that. Um, okay. Next to the closed pod, Sora's napping in. Riku finally sees him and tries to accuse Nominate, but is stopped as she explains the explanation. 
Yeah. Uh, or his situation. <laughs> Nominee tells him that he needs to make a choice about his darkness because Ansem is in that darkness. And while he's napping, eventually he's going to wake up and take over Riku again. Cool. Nominee reveals that with her powers, she can put a lock on his heart so that Ansem can never come out again. But in doing so, the darkness and all memories surrounding it will reveal will also be sealed. Oh, so he won't be able to access the darkness anymore. Not only that, he's not going to remember anything from Kingdom Hearts 1. Wow. Oh! He's going to basically reset memories to right before they left the island. Wow. Okay. Yeah, no, we don't want that, so he says Uh, no? Yeah, so obviously Rika turns that down. Yeah, cool. Uh, He's like, nah, fam, I've accepted the darkness. He's accepting what he's gained and what he's lost. Yeah, exactly. He's he's like, I'm ready to face Ansem. Um... Uh, because he trusts in the darkness to show him the way. Sure. Uh, so Rika suspects Nomine <clears throat> wanted him to choose this, which she confirms saying he's the only one who could who would be able to confront the darkness and win. Rika responds saying that this is why she must have saved him in the light, revealing that he knew that she played the part of Kyrie there, uh, saying that she and Kyrie smell the same. Whoa. Which I put interesting. Must be a shared perfume or something. <laughs> 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 um, Rika tells Nomine to look after Sora and... Returns to Castle Oblivion to find Mickey with Diz. Riku asks the rat if he knows Diz, to which he replies that he doesn't know, but that he feels mighty familiar. He feels mighty familiar, huh? (laughs) When prompted, Diz responds with some stupid fucking riddles and tells Riku that he gets to choose whether he wants to trust him. Diz gives Riku an organization robe, telling him that the org will pursue him and that the cloak worn by nobodies will render it their eyes and nose is useless. They won't be able to find him. They wear the robes to give them protection from their being devoured by darkness, which cool. I told you way back in the show. Yeah, 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 yeah. Cool. Um, so if they have that, uh, because they kind of watch people through the darkness, they're not going to be able to see him. Cool. Um, Diz gives him the Castle Oblivion card to help him draw out the darkness and finish his business with Ansem. Mickey offers to help with Ansem, but Riku turns this down knowing that it's his fight. Lots of shenanigans later... Because he also had to have his own Castle Oblivion levels. Yeah. Riku meets with Ansem. Uh, he wants to know why Riku accepts the darkness, but denies him. Riku's not impressed with Ansem's power, no, though, knowing that, you know, even with Ansem's full might, he wasn't able to beat Sora. Yeah, he's kind of a bitch. So, <laughs> Fuck him. like, why would he want that? He yeah. wants to be stronger than Sora. He's, he's still a rival. Uh, so one fight with Ansem and his dark figure, uh, who I, I do feel compelled to... Uh, remind you of, and I don't think I mentioned this in Kingdom Hearts 1, remember the dark figure. The dark figure is important. Uh, just Im- imprint that little demon boy in your mind. Go. Cool. Riku lands the final blow. Ansem tells him that his dark shadow is going to linger and that he's going to return and then explodes into a cloud of darkness. Oh, very good. Through the darkness, Mickey's light shines <laughs> through as he rescues Riku from wherever they are. And this is a memory of Ansem that's fighting. This isn't real Ansem. Ansem, Seeker of Darkness is dead? Yes, yes, yeah, yeah. He, okay. In defeating him, it feels like he puts the final nail in his accepting handsome. Cool. So, saved, Mickey asks Riku what's next. Is he going home? But Riku is, even if it's very faint, he can still feel Ansem is inside him. And that, to at least some degree, Ansem still has a hold on him. Cool. Um, Mickey's like, no, Riku, your darkness belongs to you, just as your light does. Uh, and that, up to this point, Mickey used to think that darkness shouldn't exist, but that Riku has now changed his mind on it. Oh, okay. Interesting. So, both clad in dark robes, Mickey and Riku leave the castle and travel through the green hilled path from the start of the game. There, they meet Diz, who tells Riku to choose between the road to light and darkness, but Riku says that neither suits him, and he's going to take the middle road. Mm. What is uh, the middle road? You, you can't... Diz asks if he means the twilight road to nightfall, what? to which Riku tells him that it's the road... To dawn, which becomes his whole thing for the remainder, is that he is that unlike everybody else who wants to find the nightfall in the darkness, he wants to find the dawn. So you've told us that light and dark are are their own tangible things. Yes. Is twilight a tangible thing? We also no. knew- is dawn a tangible thing? Dawn is a metaphor. For what? A new day, a new for, day. For him, yes, but no, but no. Dawn, Dawn is a metaphor for him looking at, for, for the good dark. Kingdom Hearts doesn't operate in metaphors. Yes, unless it's, it no, unless it's birds in cages and shit. Oh, the, the, when we're that. discussing Even light. Game, we've already Eddie, how? <sighs> so, <laughs> this is the end of Riku's story. Riku, yes. credits roll. But of course, this is the first game where we start getting post credit scenes. Yay. Yay. 
No so from doesn't... here, we have Marvel. two post credit scenes. Starting with Sora, we see a circular room with a number of tall chairs. On these chairs, we see a number of hooded, ignore that they're not in hoods, <laughs> uh, figures finally zooming in on the one in the tallest chair in the center. Mm-hmm. Um, <laughs> in Riku's post credit scene, we see a group of kids in Twilight Town before fading on one in particular. Sorry, who is this? We don't know. Well, it looks a bit like Cloud, but I don't like. <laughs> do you like? Do you like Chain of Memories? I like it narratively. Okay. I hate it from a gameplay perspective. It is my least favorite one from a gameplay perspective. Narratively, it sits in the middle of the games for me, mm. where it's like I like it, but I don't think that it particularly stands out amongst the games. Okay. In the same way that say like two does. I'll I'll give. My thoughts as someone who's new to all of this, I think that one obviously is this big rip roaring adventure and, and sets up the universe and a lot of the exposition. I think two, from what we've seen in the narrative, stands out so much more. Not two, Chain of Memories. <laughs> Chain of Memories left me feeling so much more than one. Oh yeah, a million times more. It yeah, really, it really gives the impression that, that one, because when one was made, it was literally. Like a conversation between two square producers who were like, they, they, they basically they saw, um, they saw, um, fucking uh, Mario, the first three D Mario, and they were like, I want, we want to make a three D game, but we want to make it featuring Disney characters. But who's gonna take on something crazy like that? And Nobu was like, Hi, hello. And so Kingdom Hearts 1 was really, like, throwing all the shit at the wall, and it was meant to be a one-and-done thing, and you can really tell in how much Kingdom Hearts 1 specifically has been retconned over the years. I think story-wise, this is convoluted and a bit all over the place at points, but I think what it does character-wise is much more interesting. Mm -hmm. And obviously it's only interesting because it's off the back of what 1 did. Yeah. The fact that Ryuka stuff is so interesting because of the first game. Yeah. I think that the cheapness can't be ignored a little bit. The writing is better, the character stuff is better, and I agree. You cannot skip Chain of Memories based off this experience alone and and walk into any future games with any close to an understanding of who R- Riku is. Uh, the separate problem is is that it's, it's, it's cheapened. It's a shame that that is the game that the story is stuck onto. But you know, the, is your this, is this old Disney you World's like... cards, the Game Boy Advance release, so, whilst, all that Whilst shit. you feel that, I will say, there are plenty of people who love the card mechanic and who think it's fantastic. Do they like well, revisiting old worlds and reliving the first game with a new narrative, like, literally slapped on top? God, why? Because the thing, like, the Disney worlds are such a non-focus in this game. I think the semantics build to a larger picture of how Nomura views his fans, and I think the Final Fantasy VII remake is going to be an example of that moving I forwards. 100% I think we're going to have serious <laughs> problems with that storyline as well, off the back of what anyway, we expect. Thanks so much for watching, guys. <laughs> we're going to pick up. We're going to pick up on the next game. Um, sure. But thanks, everyone. Bye. 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 Bye.